Let me... But you didn't answer the question. Is your comfort more important than the female people who could be victimized by this? This is a nothing question. This isn't a real question. This is a loaded question that is motivated by the response that they want to hear. There is no good answer to that question because it's not a question asked in good faith. Is your comfort more important than the female women that might, maybe, potentially, maybe, were suggesting, hypothetically, might, maybe, in this scenario, should it occur, even though I have no studies to back it up, maybe, might happen? Is it more important? It's not a question. It's like asking a person with no evidence, like, why did you murder your wife? Yeah, exactly. Like, you're front-loading that question with an accusation that you have no proof for. So to answer that question would require that they answer in the affirmative to what you're asking, even though it's not true. You understand me? It's a leading question. So I've actually been putting off looking at this video for a while now. It's a 40 minute long video and I can turn a 10 minute video into a one and a half hour long video after edits, after High Progressive does his dirty work, which we did with the uh, second to most recent video. So I'm gonna try to be very brief with this one. It's trans versus conservative women. Are periods essential to womanhood? Now, as a trans person myself and a trans femme, I am closer to being a trans woman than I am a trans man, surely. So perhaps I will have some insight here. Trans versus conservative women. I don't know what gender conservative is, uh, but you know, I guess we'll figure it out. I'm not sure I support it. I'm not sure I condone it. I'm not sure I even am aware that it exists, but we'll see. All right, so we got some trans women and trans men, or conservative women, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to misgender anybody on the conservative women's side. <laughs> I'm glad we have, um, one of the perspectives I feel like we don't see a lot is um, older trans women. There's a variety of reasons for why that's the case and all of them are bad because of, you know, youth being fetishized and being seen as inherently feminine. And as women get older and blah, 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 they are seen less as women, even though they are still women. And there's a whole bunch of stuff we can get into. I'm not gonna do that right now, but it's nice to see it because it's a perspective that you don't get the most of. And it's also a perspective that unfortunately, because of all those things I just mentioned, is not taken as seriously as it should be. The transgender movement is indoctrinating our youth. What does this even mean? What kind of a question is this? Great first question, Jubilee. Glad we've decided to jump right into the most important question when it comes to trans issues. <sighs> I wonder who's going to come up and say they agree. We are seeing, especially on social media, on TikTok, you're seeing TikTok. a lot of people in this community really just targeting children. And you're seeing what does that um, mean? drag shows, even in conservative states like Texas, and um, you, even just media, movies. Like, it seems like everything seems to be targeted at these kids. You have. What, is it, what do you mean, everything? What are movies? What movies are trying to trans your kids? Because we got Drag Story Hour, okay. You have no proof that any harm has ever come from a drag show and kids being present. So you've already lost there. What movies and TV shows are trying to trans your kids? Uh, drag story. Also, people being on TikTok being, yo, trans people exist, and that's okay. That's kind of cool. It's not indoctrinating your kids. Story Hour for kids and... Um, it's just really, I think, predatory in a way. And I'm not saying every trans person is doing this, but as a whole, there does seem to be a route that they're taking to get to the kids. I'm not saying every trans person does this, but I'm saying that the entire group as a whole is responsible for this made up thing that I have no proof exists. Very cool. This is the height of conservatism and it's, uh, you know, participation in debates and discussions. Very cool. Blues Clues playing in the next room. And then you hear the gay parade song. It's Blue's Clues. You're not expecting the, the, to be talking to the children about that. You oh my, it's I mean? so political. When did Blue's Clues become so political? They acknowledge that black people exist or are equal humans to white people. Oh no. Wait, no, I, that's a different topic that people like this were also talking about. Maybe not the black people on the panel, but certainly a lot of these conservatives had these same problems with black people being included in media back when segregation was the norm, back when slavery was the norm. If we want to be making equivocacies between black people and trans people and so-called issues with those kind of comparisons, this is an actual comparison that works. Like conservatives back in the day, literally through the same hissy fit, the same b fit about black people being included in a positive light in any media, not even to mention children's media, they did. It's the same thing as what they're talking about when it comes to trans representation in media. 
And both of those times, in both of those instances, the inclusion of these characters, if they even acknowledge the fact that there's anything involved with the person being black, because they don't have to, it's just that black people exist and they're good, actually. They're equal humans to white people, and that's nice. That's the messaging. Much the same way that characters that are trans that are being included in media, the message that's being delivered is trans people exist, that's okay, it's actually kind of nice that people get to be the people they want to be. They're not hurting anybody. That's it. That's what conservatives are mad about. That's literally it. I think any rational person should be able to see that and understand that. But these people very clearly have been victims to a lot of propaganda. You'll notice in the entirety of this video, if you've watched my content for any amount of time, the majority, if not all of the talking points you're going to hear from the conservative women, you will have already heard a thousand times. And you want to know why you've already heard them a thousand times? Because these are pre-packaged talking points that they've been sold on their social media and on the news from conservative pundits. This is the party line. This is not independent thought. This is not independent inquiry and people just asking questions. These people have been fed propaganda that is false and very verifiably false, as I've done a million times on this channel, and we've heard it all before. I wonder, are, are they really coming for the children? And I think we see in, in our population now the, the rate of young children oh boy. who are identifying as transgender, non-binary is skyrocketing. And I Don't think mention the fact that left-handedness is also skyrocketing once you make it okay that people are left-handed. Don't look at that graph. Oh, geez. That would be too much. You know, back in the day when being left-handed means you're ratting with the hand of the devil, brother, and they smack that shit with a ruler and force you to write with your right hand. Literally, this was a thing, if you could believe it, usually in religious circles, there's a cat here. Once that stigma left and people were allowed to be left-handed and write left-handed, more and more people started responding to surveys saying they were left-handed. And then eventually it plateaued out, likely to the point that it always was, it was just being suppressed before. That's also the same for trans and non-binary identification in the youth and in the general population. It's the same thing. So many people are being suppressed and oppressed on the basis of their gender identity and the fact that they are trans, that they do not respond to surveys or don't come out of the closet as trans or queer or whatever. Once we create conditions in society, once we move to an ethical system of recognizing that queer people are not hurting anybody, they're just people like you and me working shit jobs to pay the bills. Once that's an okay thing to do, the rate of people responding and being out goes up. And then it plateaus to where it's always been before it was suppressed. That's it. Very simple. There's something to be said for people who are truly experiencing gender dysphoria, which we recognize exists. Do you? And know? those who are experiencing uh, what is now going to be called, or in the future going to be called, this social contagion gender dysphoria. The social contagion conspiracy theory has been debunked, by the way. That's not a real thing. That's a thing that conspiracists and conservatives push in order to demonize trans people, in order to justify their deranged theories about trans people coming for your kids or whatever. That's it. It's the moral panic logic. It's the same thing for the satanic panic. It's the same thing for the fight for equal rights for gay people and gay marriage. It's the same thing for ending segregation. It's the same thing for ending slavery. It's the same thing for women's suffrage and trying to get women to be at an equal level to men. It's the same fucking thing every time. They're being exposed to it on social media or in school or mom and dad are having a conversation about it with children and children are now starting to- Oh wow, we actually- okay, so we're getting fact checks from uh, Jubilee, let's go. From NBCBnews.com, the quote-unquote social contagion theory can be traced back to 2018 paper published in the journal PLOS 1. From NBCNews.com as well, after intense debate and criticism, PLOS 1 issued a correction that they did not survey transgender or gender diverse youth themselves, but actually surveyed their parents. Quote, rapid onset gender dysphoria, ROGD, which is a bullshit term that doesn't mean anything, it's been made up to justify their moral panic, is not a formal mental health diagnosis at this time. So if I'm recalling correctly, and I could be incorrect here, when it comes to this study, like they said here, they surveyed the transphobic parents of these children who identified as trans and took their word for how their children were, behaved, acted, whatever. Obviously, there's going to be some bias and potentially motivated, motivated by that bias, like answers to the study. The entire thing is bunk. It's garbage. But we're citing it here as if it's an actual study of value at all. I'm very happy that Jubilee has decided to include this here.
I kind of wish they like said it with like a voiceover and a pause, but you know. Or even babies, right? People right. who are being born, they don't have to put the gender on the birth certificate in there. And this is the downfall of Western civilization, everybody. You don't have to put the gender identity on the birth certificate, even though biological sex is still recorded on the birth certificate for medical purposes. Because we do understand that there are going to be differences biologically between the male sex and female sex. Now, obviously, if you're a conservative, you disagree with medical consensus, you disagree with scientific consensus, so you don't agree with the actual fact of the matter. All of the actual experts that study this shit for a living have come to the conclusion of the consensus that gender identity is a social thing and biological sex is different from it. Meaning that you can have XY chromosomes, you can have XX chromosomes, and that makes you male or female. However, the way that society interfaces with you is your gender identity. Woman, man, and non-binary, whatever the fuck else. Also, yeah, not even to mention intersex people. The medical professionals where it is necessary for people to know your biological sex will have access to that information. The gender identity, they don't need to know that. Unless they're a mental health professional. Potentially, because cis men and cis women have different mental health needs a lot of the time. Trans women, trans men, etc., etc., will have different uh, needs as well in that setting, sure. But when it comes to biological sex and like physical medical needs, not very necessary. Doctors actually agree with that. That's actually the consensus that gender and sex are different, but you know, whatever. Don't listen to the medical professionals, don't listen to the scientists and the experts. Don't listen to any of the affirming parents of trans kids who understand that their kids are actually living very fulfilling and good lives as just opposed against the abusive, oftentimes conservative, transphobic parents that literally abuse their kids for being queer, aka being the people that they are. Don't listen to them. Listen to these conservatives on Jubilee who are citing debunked studies and conspiracy theory terms. You can choose whatever you want to be. Like, that's so dangerous. Why? What, who does it hurt? Who does it hurt? I want to know how that's dangerous. Even lying to them saying like, oh, if we put you on hormone blockers at this age, it won't do anything to your puberty. It won't affect you long term. Yeah, that's because that's what the studies have suggested. It might be uncomfortable for you. That might hurt your feelings, but that's what their studies have shown. That's why the medical consensus on puberty blockers is that there's virtually zero negative side effects for being put on them. This is why puberty blockers have been used to treat precocious puberty in cis children for a lot longer than they've been used for trans kids. You have a child that's going through a puberty way too goddamn early to a point where it might be detrimental to their health put them on puberty blockers, wait a little bit, eventually they're taken off, they go through a puberty around the normal time or even a little bit later, and they're chilling. Same thing for trans kids. You have a child that doesn't know exactly if they are trans or not, you put them on puberty blockers so that no irreversible changes happen to their body on the basis of their biological puberty. They go on those puberty blockers, have more time with the involvement of the parents and physical medical professionals and mental health professionals talking to the child about their gender identity. They eventually, over time, figure out, oh, I am trans actually. Then they go on to HRT and they go through a puberty that more aligns with their gender identity. If it turns out, oh, I'm not trans actually, they get taken off the puberty blockers, they go through a puberty around the same time that a child might normally, or a little bit later, and they're chilling. That's it. But ooh, we gotta be, oh, we gotta be so scary. It's so dangerous. Come on. And it's just a straight up lie, and there's Absolutely. like an entire Meanwhile, Reddit straight up lies. There's an entire Reddit thread. <sighs> source, source, source. Well, <laughs> joke's on you, kind stranger. I've got a Reddit thread. Who would win? Medical and scientific consensus or one Reddit thread? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Thread dedicated to people who transition talking about Oh, thank about God. How much they hate their life now because they transitioned as a child. Oh, we're really just front loading all of this rhetoric, huh? You know what's really interesting about that? The majority of people that have detransitioned, detransitioned not because they're not actually trans, but because of negative social pushback that's made their lives irreparably difficult because of the negative social stigma that people like this are continuing to try to propagate against trans people. Their abusive parents and community members that are abusing them on the basis of them being trans. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people detransition. Number two is lack of access to the healthcare necessary. They lose access to their healthcare, they lose access to their hormones, and therefore cannot continue their transition. So they end up detransitioning. Or monetary cost, which is also inlaid with that because we live in a for-profit uh, health insurance and healthcare system. Those are the main three reasons. Not because they're not trans anymore, but... The cool thing about this is that this person doesn't give a shit about detransitioners either. This person does not give a fucking shit about detransitioners at all. Because detransitioners to them have already committed the sin. 
They were already trans to begin with. They already f***ed with nature or whatever and have decided to transition to begin with. If you look at how they talk about detransitioners in a lot of turf circles and a lot of transphobic circles, detransitioners get the smoke too. The same shit they say about trans people, they say about detransitioners because they don't care about them. They're using detransitioners as a political weapon to hit trans people with. That's it. There are actual detransitioners out there and they deserve as much sympathy as anybody else. However, the detransitioners that are out there that decide to utilize their negative experience to try to cut off access to healthcare and promote negative social stigma around the trans healthcare and trans people can suck my fucking nuts. Everybody else who's detransitioned because they really, they literally understood themselves so much to know that they weren't actually trans. You have my full sympathy and support as you should have everybody else. And now they amputated off healthy body parts and are miserable. Amputated off healthy body parts. I love how spooky we have to make everything sound. Not to mention that cis people get these surgeries as well. If we're talking about trans women, or rather trans men who get double mastectomies, this happens with cis women as well, by the way, uh, for a variety of reasons. But for some reason, that's okay. But when trans people do it, it's not. All right, I've said a lot. I'm probably not going to be talking too much over the uh, the pro-trans people because they likely actually know what the f*** they're talking about. Whereas these people have a, a Facebook user's understanding of the subject. The fact that the trans movement has got people shook has me so excited. The trans movement is not indoctrinating our youth. Our youth are understanding who they are at a younger age. And from what I was hearing over here is a lot of what y'all were saying it's I complete wonder, bullshit. Sorry. How would you say it to the parents? Because we need to really look at what the parents of trans youth really go through. Trans youth, instead of them enjoying their life, playing with their friends, they're up in legislation trying to fight for basic rights. Here. True. One in five transgender youth have tried to commit suicide. Why are we trying to police them? But you're bringing it only to the parents. Being The question was indoctrination in general, am I correct? And then but they are part of but they are part of that conversation. Someone said something about drag shows coming to schools or whatnot. The kids enjoyed it. The parents just had a problem with it. But that's their issue. It's only someone dressed in drag reading a story. Is that true? Oh. Black face for women. What? What? <laughs> what do you mean? How can you say this? She said, and I quote: "Is drag not black face for women?" What are these words coming out of your mouth? This is literally a racist take. Excuse me, a white Latino calling a woman browner than me fucking racist, but holy shit. This is literally delegitimizing the danger and harm that the concept of blackface and its practice has done to black people, African Americans and African people who were literally stolen from Africa and made fun of for the entertainment of the people that stole them and white people around them that hated them and exploited their labor, treated them like garbage, literally as subhuman. You're gonna compare that to when it comes to drag queens, usually cis men, but not always, dressing up? Are you joking? Do you actually have a problem with blackface? Because the way you're talking, it seems like you don't really think of it as that much of an issue. But it is. Because they're not the same. They're not even close. Men have been wearing makeup longer than women. Oh yeah, for a long time, it was literally only men that were allowed to wear a variety of things that these kind of people would call men, you know, slurs for wearing. Like tights, like high heels. But we won't talk about that. We won't talk about social constructs and the way that society interfaces with things past the biological level because we're not being idiots that's you know too high level i see it as a caricature of womanhood but inherently as sexual insulting. as well inherently <laughs> sexual what the f what do you mean in what do you mean in inherently sexual as well sorry i'm trying to get back to the person who didn't say that how am i hitting the wrong button here this person right here said inherently sexual as well that is a self-report why are you posting your own l's why is it that you see a drag queen dressed like a Disney princess wearing less revealing clothing than you're wearing right now on this Jubilee panel? You're calling them sexual? You might want to evaluate what's going on in your head when you're looking at that. Do you get aroused by that? What the f***? That's a you problem. That's weird. I have to agree with you guys. I do not like the drag queen social hours. Um, I, I personally, as a trans... I take it back. I'm sorry. You know, I was like, yo, having an older trans woman here, glad to see the diversity of opinion because they don't usually get their opinions heard or taken seriously. On this specific point, unfortunate. But let's hear them out. Let's hear her out. 
trans person didn't ever go to a drag show until I was about 40. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not for the sexualization of kids. Okay, so what is this presupposition then that you're seemingly positing here that drag queen story hour is inherently sexual and sexualizing the kids themselves? Because it's not happening. I mean, you've seen no evidence that support that. And we've also seen no evidence that drag queen story hour is in any way harmful to children either. Next question. Why are we teaching? Why are we not letting kids be kids? And letting kids be kids would involve allowing them to dress the way they want to. If little Sarah says, I'm actually Samuel, and I think that name is better for me, and wants to wear jeans and play with G.I. Joes, more power to Samuel. That's letting a kid be a kid. What's not letting a kid be a kid is being like, no, Sarah, you're a girl, so you have to wear dresses, and you have to play with Barbies. That's not letting a kid be a kid. That's stopping them from doing what they want to do, which is not hurting anybody, and forcing them to be the way you want them to be. That is not letting kids be kids. Bringing sex into their lives so early. I think sorry, it's sorry I'm very excited. Um, I had a good day today, and I'm very happy. And I've been high energy this entire stream, if anybody's been watching this entire stream. I'm having fun. <laughs> predatory in general to talk about sex with children yeah. that's that's a good thing that nobody is except for teachers in sexual health education in the clinical setting of a classroom where they've been giving training to specifically talk about these kinds of topics these kinds of sensitive topics with children that's literally their job in a very clinical sterile setting but let's see if she completely comes out against sex education for the youth, because I've got some things to say if that's the case. Straight sex, any kind of sex. Like, hold, 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 hold. So talking about sex or any kind of sex. Okay, who's teaching sex to third grade children? Teaching sex to third grade children. I really uh, want to know. Have you looked There's at the California piece. curriculum for sex Genesis. education? Okay. You need to. Okay, so that's teachers who have been taught the best practices to teach a sensitive topic like sex education to kids in the clinical sterile setting of a classroom. The safest place you could possibly be to have those kinds of conversations? If you are against that, by the way, studies have shown that rates of child abuse go up in states that do not have comprehensive sex education. Abstinence-only sex education leads to higher rates of teen pregnancy, higher rates of STI transmission, higher rates of abortion, if that's a thing you don't like, higher rates of child abuse. Sex education for children teaches children what abuse looks like when it comes to sexual abuse. Once a child understands that, they'll be able to tell if they're being abused and are then more likely to report it to authorities and bring the abuser to justice. That abuser, by the way, in a general sense, on average, is a white, heterosexual, cisgender man who has a connection to the child, usually by family ties. Just by the way, not some random drag queen at a story hour where we've never seen any evidence of any harm being done. So if you are against comprehensive sex education for children in the clinical setting of a classroom, you might want to do some soul searching because I don't think you're in favor of children not being able to understand when they're being abused and not being able to report it. I don't think you're going to be in favor of more teen pregnancy. I don't think you're going to be in favor of more STIs being transmitted because people don't know how to have safe sex. I don't think that's what you're for. So you might want to look into that a little bit. In preschool, I got my first crush on a boy because um, to me at the time, in kindergarten, he looked like um, Prince Eric from Little Mermaid. Yeah, Little Mermaid. Um, I don't think like fucking him ever crossed my mind when I was four. But obviously, like it would have been good to know that like it's okay. Like if you have these feelings for someone of the same sex. We think of so this is the difference, and and this is also a thing, much the same way that stupid ass conservatives don't agree with the medical and scientific consensus on gender and sex being different things, they also don't seem to understand that there is a difference between romance and sex. These are two different things. Romance, sexuality, two different things. Because it is possible to be asexual, meaning you have little to no desire to have sexual engagements with another person. But it is also possible for that same asexual person to be, say, a heteroromantic, meaning they have a romantic connection, they have the capacity to have a romantic connection and have an interest in having romantic engagements with people of the opposite gender or gender they don't identify with. Meaning going on dates, you know, hand holding, hugging, kissing, whatever. They might not have the interest in having sex, but they would still have the interest in a variety of things involved in romance. You know, going on dates, being courted, courting people, all this stuff. It is possible as well for someone to be heterosexual, but aromantic. 
meaning that they have the interest in sexual engagements with somebody of a gender that doesn't identify as the same as they do, but does not have an interest in romantic engagements or has little to no interest in them. That is a very real thing that we see in society. It is a normal thing to have different variances and ranges for how interested in people are when it comes to romance and how interested people are when it comes to things involving sexuality and sex. There is variance there. Some people are hypersexual. Some people are hyper romantic, right? If you disagree with that, and if you, like a lot of conservatives do, like Matt Walsh, who likes to pull over to the side of the road and randomly rant about the age of consent, if you're like him, or let's be honest, our average conservative who hasn't really thought about it too much, and you believe that romance and sex are the same thing, for one, you're sexualizing romance, and for two, that leads to a lot of really weird conclusions that Matt Walsh kind of hints at in videos where he pulls over to the side of the road and rants about, you know, the arbitrary nature of the age of consent or the arbitrary nature of, you know, the Me Too movement or whatever the f*** he's talking about. Really weird stuff. It leads to a lot of really weird conclusions because everybody who has been a child understands that when they were a child with their peers, like uh, Roxanne was just saying, you can have crushes on other people your age, right? This is a common part of being a human being, the human experience. It's very common where, oh, Johnny, who is in third grade, whatever, likes Josephine because he thinks she's nice and has nice hair and whatever. And maybe, you know, they, they hang out with parental supervision or whatever. They hang out on the playground. That's very normal. Everybody has had these experiences, more or less. Having a crush on somebody in your age group is a very normal thing. But if you do not agree that there is a difference between romance and sex, you are sexualizing children in that instance. If it is your opinion that romance and sex are the same thing, then children could never have crushes on each other because to you, those would be inherently sexual, which they are not at all. That's a problem you got to work out in your head. That's a logic tree that you got to figure out if that is your take. I don't agree with that. Because I understand the difference between romance and sex. And I agree with the fact that when I was a kid and when other people were kids, you have crushes on people who are in the same age group as you. And that's closer to a romantic experience than it is a fucking sexual one. Like, come on, let's not be weird here. Like, I, I feel like this is not that difficult to understand. And I hope it's not. But it seems like it to a lot of conservatives. It's really difficult for them to separate romance from sex. Now, sure, it is the case that romance often will lead to sex in adult relationships. But we're talking about kids here, man. Come on, don't be weird. Youth in general, they're having sex at a lot younger age, whether we like it or not. Let's just keep it 100% real. You don't think it's real. because of that? I, don't, I do not think it's because of that. It starts at home with parents. It's literally, no, it's not, nothing is, <sighs> this has always happened. This has always happened. The youth, usually after you hit puberty, go through a variety of hormonal changes, and they are likely to engage with other people in their age group based on those changes. And oftentimes that will involve romantic and sexual engagements. It just happens. This is a fact of human nature. This is life. Like teens will engage with other teens in their age group, usually from their school, in that way. So if you disagree with comprehensive sex education being taught to kids, those teens end up being more likely to accidentally get pregnant or get somebody pregnant, end up getting an abortion, end up transmitting an STI, or being abused because they do not know what abuse looks like because they haven't been taught it. If we understand that, that teens in their own age group are going to be engaging with each other in that way, you would want to make sure that they are educated enough to understand what's safe and what's not. And hopefully they operate on that and be as safe as possible. Very simple. But that requires actually acknowledging reality. That requires getting out of your little hug box where your feelings could never be hurt with your snowflake conservative ass and actually acknowledging reality rather than trying to force your delusions on everybody else because it makes you feel better. Because I don't know about you, but I would like rates of teen pregnancy to go down. Because generally speaking, teens are not prepared to be pregnant and carry a baby to term. Also, it's an incredibly traumatic experience no matter what age you are. You could be 40 and having a kid could be a traumatic experience. Certainly traumatic on your body physically. You're going to want to plan for that. I'm also not really cool with rates of, you know, those accidental pregnancies leading to more abortions because that's also a traumatic experience for the parties involved. Like, <sighs> anyway teaching their children because one of two things is going to happen either you teach your children or the world is going to teach your kids that's the reality of it they are learning about it at younger ages from some adults or even their peers who learned about it from adults mm -hmm. that is in definition indoctrination As a what 
What do you mean indefinition indoctrination? If we want to go by the strict semantic definition of indoctrination, it literally is to teach. To indoctrinate is to teach. So if you want to be that fucking pinpointed on the semantics, then children are indoctrinated into a whole lot of stuff. Children are indoctrinated into understanding that there is a theory of gravity that seems to be true. You know, I pick up this chapstick, it falls to the ground when I let go of it. In that case, they're indoctrinated to believe that the sun is bright so long as they can see. And that the earth revolves around the sun and not the other way around. Like, if we want to be that pinpointed on the language, then the way that you are using the term indoctrination, which is very politically charged and not very helpful at all, is not really, like, helpful to your case. To make obtuse the definition of the negative kind of indoctrination that we're talking about, like, say, indoctrinating somebody into believing that, I don't know, women are less than men, which is a thing that happens, unfortunately, in our society and we would hope to do away with, you would start to have difficulty actually tackling that issue because you've muddied the meaning of what the negative kind of indoctrination that people use their term means. This is from the Words Have Meanings crowd, by the way. Seeing what my children are going to have to be <laughs> introduced to at such a young age, like I didn't even know what a gay person was till I was like 12. <laughs> wow, and what a great life it would have been. Who cares? I didn't ask. Who asked? Did Artemy ask? I don't think he asked. He's down there, but I don't think he's asking. Who asked? Was that a good thing for you? I could tell you it wasn't a good thing for anybody who might have been gay because they were living a shit life, but oh yeah, at least if you're heterosexual, we assume, and cisgender, we assume, at least you were good. But all the other people who are not cis heterosexual were kind of hurting, kind of struggling because of an immutable characteristic about their identity. I'd like to make it so that people cannot be discriminated against based upon their immutable characteristics. But maybe I'm too woke, I don't know having these really heavy adult conversations at a really young age just yeah so what's the adult conversation you're talking about would you like to get specific about that probably not because of their exposure and that is honestly just scary notice that we haven't gotten into any specifics by the way we haven't gotten onto any specifics what's the specific so far we've gotten drag queen story hour hurts my feelings and debunked studies about so-called rapid onset gender dysphoria which is bullshit and jubilee literally fact checked saying it was bullshit the study itself was bullshit so, so far, the conservative women on this panel have nothing. Great work, everybody. We've done it. We will not get into specifics because they cannot win that argument. I want to have those conversations. That's why I will be homeschooling my kids. Oh, boy. Um, because I do believe it is my responsibility to protect them and shield them from the outside world, which is targeting children. What does that mean? Protect them from the outside world? So this is, by the way, this is the political side of the aisle that is saying kids are too soft, that kids would never make it in the real world because they're sheltered. Simultaneously saying, oh, I'm gonna homeschool my kids because I gotta protect them from the outside world. Like understanding that gay people exist and that's an okay thing to, to be, to be gay. Nobody cares. It's not hurting anybody, nobody gives a shit. So scary, man. I'm super, super sorry that happened to you. The trans community and the trans movement is really shaking the course of what people think gender identity is supposed to be. So in one sentence, you're saying that you guys are not responsible for you the indoctrination guys. that's currently happening with Absolutely children. Absolutely not. And in the second sentence, you are saying we are shook by the fact that you are responsible for it. No, you are shook at the fact that the trans movement has become what it is. And a movement that influences- A movement that understands that trans people are real they exist, and they're not hurting anybody. Much the same way that gay and queer people generally exist, are real, and are not hurting anybody. Much the same way that women have the ability to vote, and that's okay, and it's good for them to have that, and it's not hurting anybody. Much the same way that black and brown people should not be subjugated based on their immutable characteristics, and that's okay, and they're better off if they are equal members of society. That's the same. It's the same shit. It's the same shit. All civil rights fights are connected. I've talked about this ad nauseum. Intersectional analysis of the rights of the marginalized and the fights involved in attaining them is absolutely necessary. You cannot be a feminist and not have an intersectional understanding of all of this. You cannot be progressive and not have an intersectional understanding of all of this, about how all of these marginalized identities intertwine and how the oppressions brought to them also intertwine. That is the only way we're going to liberate everybody. It is the only way. Uh, um, people powerful. all over the world and particularly children and we see the particularly it. children we've, we've seen no evidence for this no evidence where's your evidence source 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 and don't tell me a fucking reddit thread where's your source you don't have one you're bullshit you have nothing you've got feelings anyway 
in the fact that the, the number of young people identifying as transgender, non-binary, gender fluid, gender queer is skyrocketing. Because they are more accepted, because it's okay in society for people to be gay, because we understand that they're not hurting anybody, and it's okay. There is less oppression on the basis of that, so more people are safe and feel comfortable enough to say and be out as that. That's it which means that children are being exposed to these ideas, and it's certainly coming from institutions like the media, like Hollywood, like our public institutions. Hollywood? I hate this. I don't think this is a dog whistle, but holy shit, are dog whistles a thing that you gotta look out for. I, like I said, I do not know, I don't have enough evidence to know that it is a dog whistle, but god damn it, this is the difficulty with dog whistles, man in schools so to say that that is not happening or to deny that that is the reality negates the numbers that we're seeing yeah but, uh, but also negates the numbers that you're seeing are a, literally a simple graph about left-handedness but we've already been over so get fucked i guess you're beat i don't know i would say is that the idea that there is a single transgender movement and ideology is disingenuous and that at its core, being transgender is about separating sex from sex roles and gender roles that are compulsory. Do you think that children should be able to transition medically? No. I think... No. no. It just really depends on each individual um, situation. They it depends on how you define that. It depends on how you define transition medically. Because generally speaking, the best practice and the actual consensus on the issue in the medical community is that if a child has questions about their gender identity, they talk to their parents, they talk to a mental health professional, they talk to a medical health professional, and try to help that child understand if they are or are not trans. If it turns out that they think they might be trans, and it's getting around the point in their lives where they might go through puberty, and that that puberty would potentially conflict with their actual gender identity and might be harmful and produce irreversible things that they don't want to happen to their body, they get put on puberty blockers, which have been used for cis children to treat precocious puberty for a lot longer than they've been used for trans children. They're put on puberty blockers. They still go through the consultations with the medical health professionals, the mental health professionals, and their parents and themselves continue to try to figure it out and i've already been over this because it's the same shit every time should be able to make the best medical decision for them now it, no so if you're talking about medical transition in terms of surgeries which is usually what these people are talking about when they say medical transition or transition in general because genitalia for some reason is the first thing that pops into conservatives minds when talking about you know trans people or children even they immediately think about like vaginoplasty or double mastectomies and all that kind of shit. but that's not happening to kids there's no evidence to support that that's happening to kids because it's not in fact it's difficult to do a double mastectomy when there's no mastectomy to be there you know what i mean before they haven't gone through puberty to be able to have breasts it's hard to get rid of them, right so it doesn't happen. Much the same way it's difficult to do a vaginoplasty if there isn't enough, you know, material there to do it. Which is why that is always happening when the person is an adult. So that's not happening. I'm comfortable sharing bathrooms with the other side. But I don't give a f As long as you're getting in there, doing your business and getting out, I don't give a shit. Why the f do I care? I'm not looking at you when you're using the bathroom. I'm doing my own shit and I'm getting out. Why do you care? Like... Gender segregated bathrooms were not always a thing because they're actually, it actually was the case that at a certain point in time, men could literally only use public bathrooms because men were the only people that were allowed to work. Eventually, when women were enfranchised in the workforce, eventually gender segregated bathrooms happened mostly because of misogynistic ideas of women being too dainty and too precious to be able to use the same restroom that a man had used. That's it. You could say you have concerns over a man entering the woman's room and doing whatever abuse they might do, but that's already against the law, the abuse. And if a man was going to infiltrate a woman's room and do that, they would do it regardless of if it was a unisex bathroom or not then. Because they're already to the point where they're going to be breaking a bigger law, which is abusing a person, compared to a smaller rule, which is if you're a man, you're not allowed in this bathroom or whatever. They're like, obviously, there's orders of magnitude between those two things, and they're already committed to the worst one. So they don't give a shit about the other one. So it's not going to stop them. Yes, I feel comfortable. Safe? That might be a different question, but... Oh, nice! Comfortable? Yes, I feel comfortable. Nice. Well, that's nice. What I think uh, the bathroom issue opens up oh, boy. is an issue of predatory men taking advantage I of the... I just preempted this argument because it's always the fucking same. Ba -ba -da. It's always the same old sh I'm fucking tired of it, man. Now they could walk into a women's bathroom or a women's locker room, as we've seen happen in instances like here in Los Angeles. But they've always been able to do that. 
and a rule saying that, oh, this is a unisex bathroom now is not going to stop that. And a rule saying that a sign posted outside the fucking bathroom door saying that men are not allowed here is not going to stop them from doing that. So stopping trans women from being able to use the restrooms that they are comfortable with is not going to stop them from doing that. Not to mention that trans women are often going to be at risk going into a men's room. If it is your position that you think a man going into the woman's room is unsafe because of a variety of factors, including the men are likely to be stronger because of biological differences and blah 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 well then certainly putting a frail fucking trans woman in there who's been on hrt to the point where their testosterone levels are way below even a cis woman sometimes and they're usually not the type to try to be super muscly though you know uncritical support for my muscle trans women out there they're going to be going into a men's room full of those people that you think are a threat to women should they go into the women's room and they will be likely to be in harm Arms way. But these conservatives are more than likely okay with that because they do not care about trans people. They do not care about trans people's safety. They just care about being able to weaponize the existence of trans people and trans people fighting for their liberation for their political gain, for their monetary gain. Some of them might have drunk the Kool-Aid and not been able to understand scientific and medical consensus, but for a lot of them, it's just a clout game. And then they just like, they like to hate on people that aren't like them, that they think are icky because they hurt their feelings. That's it. Mm -hmm. And they go into a woman's space, they expose themselves to the women, and then they say, well, I'm a trans woman and you've opened up this space for me. But we cannot... Bl this, does not, this does not happen at any rate. So I do not have the study on this. However, I'd be willing to bet that the rate of cis men entering the women's room to predate upon the women in there is probably higher by orders of magnitude than trans women doing this. If there is data on this, I would be overwhelmingly likely to believe that that is the case because there are more cis men out there than there are trans women by orders of magnitude. So therefore, cis men doing this and predating upon women in the women's room in this way is statistically more likely to happen. But it turns out that the gender segregated bathrooms we have right now and a sign being posted out that men are not allowed in the women's room hasn't stopped them from doing that. So this doesn't mean anything. This is a nothing argument. There is no debate to be had here because this is a garbage argument that doesn't go anywhere. If they get their way and trans men are not allowed to use the women's room, that doesn't change anything. It is a symbolic victory for transphobes. That's literally all it is. It is a political cudgel that was wielded back when it first came up and it's still around to this day. That's the problem right here. Because again, when you walk into the bathroom, I'm not interested in knowing what you are, what you identify as. I'm trying to use the bathroom and leave out of there. True. God, I love normal people. I fucking love normal people who enter a restroom, utilize the services of the restroom, which will often include a toilet, wash their hands and get the fuck out. I love normal people who go into a bathroom, do their business and leave. For some reason, conservatives seem to think that there's a lot more going on in bathrooms, maybe because they're doing a lot more than that in bathrooms. But I don't know. To say is that when trans women go into the bathroom, they're being predatory, and that is not the case. That is something we do not blame on What do you mean nobody said that, you pussy ass bitch? What do you mean nobody said that? You're literally saying this. You're saying that there is a problem with allowing trans women in the women's room because it allows for predatory men to say, oh, I'm a trans woman, and then go in and predate upon women. That's what you're saying. Just own up to it. Just say it with your chest. Come on. Look, I, I very forthcomingly very excitedly and have a lot of fun doing it, say what I believe. Why can't you? Why can't you? It's probably because you understand you're full of shit deep down, but maybe not, I don't know. Although you were not saying that, when we talk about predatory behavior and when we talk about like the, the predatory cases, none of them have been trans women. So let's just, I just wanna make sure, I know she's not, I'm not, I know she's not strictly doing that, but because- By the way, I will say, I am getting very excited and I'm acting out and I'm being rambunctious because I'm on a camera right now. I'm having fun. I believe what I'm saying, but I'm playing it up for fun, right? For the entertainment of viewers like you. Thank you. Uh, but if I was to be on the Jubilee panel, I would not be interacting in this way. Just so you know, like if you're talking to people in real life, you should not mimic my very bombastic style unless you have like a suspicion that it might make you more likely to be effective, which usually isn't going to be the case. If you're just talking to people, you just talk to them. Like if I was here, I would say exactly what I'm saying. Maybe I'd be, you know, put a little stank on it every now and again. But generally speaking, I would say what I'd be saying in an even tone like I am right now, talking normally. And that would be that. But I'd be saying the same exact thing, just so you know.
Like, I don't want people to think that, oh, because Kanye is so bombastic and loud about all the stuff that he, she, they use, doesn't mean you should go out and do that as well. Because there will be situations where that's not beneficial and sometimes where it's kind of productive. So, you know. He said that, I think it's very important that I bring that out sure. on the table and but discuss that. We have to have the conversation, and I'll, I'll open up the question. We know that if this legislation happens, if we move forward with this move, there are going to be men who take advantage of it. Much the same way that there are already men who take advantage of the fact that a sign posted outside saying no men allowed doesn't stop them from doing it. Next question. Now, I, I want to ask you, is your comfort as far as going to the bathroom more important than the female women that will be victimized? Ooh, the female women. Ooh. This person doesn't think that this is a woman. This person doesn't think that this trans woman, who's been incredibly kind, incredibly respectful, isn't actually a woman. The female woman. F off. Like at this point, I might start getting a little bit of an attitude. Who said female women will be victimized by this? They will and they have. No, you're only assuming, but True. the reality of it is, again, you are assuming. when people are going into the restroom. Show me the studies that aren't Reddit threads. When people are only going into the restroom, they're only focused I can tell why this video is 40 minutes long. I'm doing one or two things, and that's using the restroom. Yeah, I, um, let me... Let but me you know. didn't answer the question. Is your comfort more important than the female people who could be victimized by this? This is, a, this is a nothing question. This isn't a real question. This is a loaded question that is motivated by the response that they want to hear. There is no good answer to that question because it's not a question asked in good faith. Is your comfort more important than the female women that might, maybe, potentially, maybe, were suggesting, hypothetically, might, maybe, in this scenario, should it occur, even though I have no studies to back it up, maybe, might happen? Is it more important? It's not a question. It's bullshit. It's like asking a person with no evidence, like, how did you feel when you beat your wife? Like, why did you murder your wife? Yeah, exactly. Like, you're front-loading that question with an accusation that you have no proof for. So to answer that question would require that they answer in the affirmative to what you're asking, even though it's not true. You understand me? It's a leading question. So let's, let me ask, let me help her answer the question. Which one do you think I'm going to get the shit kicked out of me in? Hmm. It wasn't the women's restaurant. True! The, the issue that, that you're bringing up... First so of I believe what Gina is saying here is that she is more likely to be the victim of a hate crime of abuse if she goes into the men's room. I believe that's what she's saying. Because of the fact that she is a trans woman, is more likely to be the victim of abuse by the men in that restroom if she enters the men's restroom. The only thing that happens if you disallow trans women from using the restroom they are most comfortable with, in this case, the women's room, is that those trans women end up using the men's restroom and you put them in the harm's way that you suggest that men entering the women's room would put the women in that situation in. That's all that happens. On the one hand, trans women use the women's room and nobody gives a shit. Everybody does their business and leaves. And on the other hand, you're condemning the trans woman to go into the restrooms where you're presupposing all these predatory men exist. It's the same argument as to when they suggest, oh, well, what about trans women in men's prisons? What if, you know, a trans woman goes to a men's prison, they're going to rape all the women there or whatever. Not to mention that there's no studies that back that up. But there are instances that suggest that if you send a trans woman to a men's prison, that person is fucked. That person is in grave danger because men are already dangerous to each other in that situation. It's the same argument. First of all, is already violating a whole bunch of laws. True. Okay. If somebody's exposing themselves in a bathroom, that's a whole different environment rather than just letting trans people in. In, in California, it's right now 100% legal for trans people to go use the- I don't know how this person can be agreeing with what Gina is saying. If you don't think that any trans people should be going into the bathroom, Gina says, well, if there's a, a, a man that's going into the women's room, they're already breaking rules and laws. So they're already going to be more likely to do that if they're entering that in that way. Like they don't really care about the fact that there's a no men allowed sign on the outside. How can you say, yes, of course, I agree with that to that. And then also say that trans women shouldn't be allowed to use the women's room. They don't have a coherent ideology. They don't have any coherent talking points. They have prepackaged talking points that they have rehearsed and that they've seen on social media, that they've seen push of them on like Fox News or wherever they get their news. And it's all bulletin. You're asking this question as if I would not stand up for cis women that were in the restroom. And that's not the case. Um, nice dodge there. True. But dodging. the reality get of it is- Oh, I'm not dodging. Shut the f up. Holy. This person does not have a spine right here. This person, no spine, a very noodly, very wet noodle ass behavior here. Oh my God, I want to dish out so much vitriol and hatred. 
and I'm going to couch it in a lot of language that makes me seem reasonable. But I don't want any of that back at me. Ooh, that hurts my feelings. Fuck off. The thing I, I, I'm noticing is we're reducing a lot of these particular conversations to genitalia. True. And it's not about genitalia. It's about safety. But you'd misunderstand based trans woman on the Jubilee panel. You misunderstand because whenever conservatives think of trans people, they think of genitals and they think of sex. I don't know why that is. Because when I think of a trans person, I see, oh, that's a trans person. Wow, they exist. Hell yeah, good for you. Keep on trucking. You're a person like me. Hell yeah. But when a conservative sees a trans person, or even when a conservative sees, let's say, two gay men holding hands walking down the street, they're immediately thinking of genitals. Oh my god, are they having sex? Are they putting a penis in a butthole? It's really weird, man. And you gotta f try to figure out why that is. Because if I see two gay men holding hands walking down the street, I'm like, wow, that's two gay men walking down the street. Isn't it so nice to live in a world, in a country, where that can happen and everybody is chilling and nobody gives a shit? Because that's the end goal, really. I don't necessarily need people to be like, oh my god, two gay men walking down the street. This is a triumph of the human spirit. The only reason that's the case is because they've been oppressed for so long and now finally they are less oppressed and that's a good thing. But ideally, the end scenario is that, oh, that's two people walking down the street. I don't even notice that they're gay because I don't give a shit. That's the end goal. Like the goal of the trans liberation movement, the goal of queer liberation is a very boring one. It is a very mundane one. We just want to be seen as people doing the shit everybody else is doing, going to work, going home, and that's it. That's all you want. I don't need any special privileges. I just want to be like a normal person like everybody else. That's how I want society to look at me. I don't need nothing else than that. Sure. What, what, you, what you're concerned about is that you're maybe really, possibly that people feel more emboldened to put on women's clothes and go into the bathroom. But they're still violating the law all over the place if that's the purpose that they're going in for. True! Yeah, so I didn't step forward because, um, and I know in today's age this oh, is going to sound very radical. And, you know, oh, well, well, um, well, well. But I just, I don't agree with the whole transgender ideology. What does that mean, transgender ideology? Can you define that for me? You can't, but can you, please? Uh, you don't agree that trans people exist, but you're wrong about that, so you don't want trans people to exist? Because that's the only thing I can really gain from that. Because if you're not going to define a transgender ideology for me, because they never do, well then okay, well then what do you not agree with when it comes to the trans people existing? The fact that they exist? Or do you not want them to exist? Or both? And so for me, it's encouraging something that is based in what I feel is delusion. So what's really cool about that is that you are actually delusional for disagreeing with the medical and scientific consensus on the issue. The difference between biological sex and gender identity, the consensus on the standards of care for trans health care for the youth and for adults. You disagree with these studies that have actually shown the opposite of what you believe. You are delusional. You are the one who is delusional because you disagree with the people who have literally devoted their lives to studying the issue and understanding it based on your feelings. And so I don't think that we should be encouraging that by allowing men into women's restrooms. Don't care. So you can immediately discount everything this person is saying. I can, by the way, I can almost guarantee this person has a social media account where they're trying to be an influencer or whatever. I can almost guarantee that that's the case. If somebody in the chat wants to look it up, feel free. I think that if that's the case, that to some extent, all gender is delusion. If we're True! looking at- True, holy shit based gender abolitionist on the Jubilee panel. Let's go. The fact that the idea that because you identify as a woman, you have to stay at home, be barefoot and pregnant, you know, do all the housework and care for a man and be the subject of a man, that idea is a delusional one because there is no reason for that idea to exist. It does more harm than it has ever done good. And the only reason it exists is because of tradition, both the tradition made by misogynistic men, literally just to keep women down, to keep women oppressed, to stop women from being equal citizens, just like everybody else. That's delusional, if you think that, because there is no actual reason for that to be the case. 
Much the same way that it is delusional to say that because somebody identifies as a man, they have to be the breadwinner. They have to go out and work. They have to be the protector. The idea that a woman cannot go out and be the breadwinner, the idea that a man cannot be a stay-at-home dad is delusional because it is counterfactual to reality. These things happen, you know, against the wishes of a lot of conservatives who fought tooth and nail to stop it from happening, stop women from being allowed to go into the workforce, stop women from being allowed to vote, stop men from being allowed to like be stay-at-home dads, usually because of social pressure and not because of any laws, though there was, you know, forced labor and all that that would have stopped men from doing that anyway, and the broader social conditions. Regardless, I'm already saying so much shit that is way over the heads of a lot of the, con of all the conservatives on this panel. I digress. You are delusional for a variety of reasons if you think these things. The fact that you would have the audacity to say that the people who know more than you about all of these topics are the ones who are delusional is ludicrous. You've got nothing. You've got feelings in fictional scenarios you've made up in your head. That's all you have. Uh, historically, anywhere. By the way, before I'm called a misogynist, once again, I have a lot of content on my channel saying the same things to people like Matt Walsh, like Ben Shapiro. For as much as you could say that they are men, and I've got some questions, frankly, given some of the behavior I've seen. As much as you could say that those are men, I have given them the same heat, the same smoke. I have said the same sh I encourage you to go watch it. It's all very good. From... And also other men who are random ass nobodies on Jubilee panels who are transphobic or misogynistic. Because I've also, you know, done a lot of pro-feminist content, pro-women's rights content on this channel, arguing against people like that. You know, midwives after the enclosure of the commons in the 1400s, um, having their whole trade affected or Brewster's having their trade affected. And now we don't think of women as, you know, Brewster's or that creating beer is a womanly thing. These all came. That's an interesting um, point that I had not known about before, but I'm just learning now. The idea that, and I guess, yeah, being like a barmaid or whatever is like a thing that I've heard about, usually in like fantasy media or whatever, when they like come out with all the beers to all the men in the bar or whatever. Uh, but brewing beer, drinking beer generally is now seen as a man's thing. That's a manly thing to do. You know, usually you would expect women, feminine people to get like martinis, you know, mixed drinks and all this kind of shit, right? To be bartenders, yeah. Meanwhile, there's a lot of people that love going out to their local bars, you know, and chatting up the woman that's a bartender behind the, the bar. Pink and blue switch in the Victorian area that recently? Yeah, exactly. A lot of gender, regardless of biological sex, it didn't like naturally flow out of our genitals. And like it was like, you know, we're like, this is how my genitals are. So this is like how my gender is going to be. That didn't happen. That's that's not like like. A lot of people who are either transgender or who are um, LGBT in general. All my friends were girls. At first, I, I just remember there were a lot of things where, like, I would kind of like come up against people telling me that that's wrong, like that whether it's something I like, something I want to do. It wasn't until kindergarten that like someone told me that I'm a boy, and I was like, oh. Hmm. Are you ready for a really hot take that's going to anger the conservatives if they are still watching this an hour and 15 minutes in? Everybody is non-binary until they have the ability to understand what gender identity is as a social construct and then decide for themselves through their lived experience, through the experience that they've had and the experiences they would like to have if they are man, woman, non-binary, whatever. Everybody is born non-binary because of the fact that biological sex, so everybody is born a biological sex or intersex, you know, so either man, woman, intersex, whatever. And there's a variety of biological things and medical things that go along with that, which is why biological sex is still marked and is available to medical professionals to see when you're getting care. But the gender identity that that person exhibits, being a social construct, until you are at the point where you can understand that, and very clearly the conservatives on this panel are not at that point yet, so I think they're still non-binary, until you can understand that gender identity is a social construct and has been fluid throughout all of human history, you cannot have a gender identity. Because you don't understand what it is. How can you have a thing if you don't understand what it is? If it's socially constructed. Now, sure, you might not understand what biological sex is, but we have more factual basis for there being biological differences between people, you know, that are of whatever biological sex. But we also have an understanding, and at least, the, you know, the medical and scientific consensus on the issue, that gender and sex are different things, and gender identity is socially constructed. Anyway. I don't feel comfortable going to any bathroom in this world, like, in, in the current society we live in, and to... And isn't that just the saddest thing you've ever heard? Because no cis woman on this panel is going to say that. No cis woman is going to say, I don't feel comfortable going to the women's room. 
unless their caveat is added that, oh my god, there might be a trans woman in there. That doesn't happen. But so many trans women, trans men, trans people generally speaking, feel uneasy using bathrooms that they are told by society they are not meant to use. Places where you go in, use the restroom, use the toilet, wash your hands, and leave. Make trans women the whipping girls of that. Um, I, I think that's disingenuous, but I do think that we need a systemic change to make ourselves safer. I don't really know anyone who doesn't feel a little bit uncomfortable going to the bathroom. And trans Even I do. In both bathrooms. Because of societal pushback and society generally, and the entire you know, ecosystem we inhabit as a trans person, I am the same way. You know, as, as confident as I am as a person, I still feel uneasy using either bathroom if it is gender segregated. Myself, looking like I do right now, going into the men's room, I'm small. Even if I wasn't, there's potential for danger there because it's a lot of men in there, right? The same way that one of these cis women on the panel going into a man's room would have the similar feelings. Much the same way that I don't feel like I'm going to be the victim of some kind of like physical abuse going into the women's room. I do still feel uncomfortable because I worry that I might make the other people in the bathroom uncomfortable simply by existing and using the restroom and leaving like everybody else. I worry that I might be making people uncomfortable because I exist. Not because of anything I'm doing, but because I'm exist I exist and I'm using the facilities like everybody else. I get in, use the restroom, I leave. That's it. But I still feel uncomfortable. That is the case for so many trans people. I would argue the majority, but I, mean, I don't think I have a, I don't currently have a study to back that up, right? But none of these cis women would have the similar thoughts or opinions. The only time that they will ever talk about feeling unsafe in a bathroom is if a literal cis man is in there, or if they believe a trans woman is in there, or even like conceive of the hypothetical concept that a trans woman might be in there. That's it. Because of course they're going to feel uncomfortable going into a man's bathroom in a gender segregated system. Of course they are. So why would you send other women, in this case trans women, in that situation? And trans people are not a delusion. True. Let's make it very clear. We're here. We've been here for ages. We've true. been here since the beginning of time. True. We're in your it's history It's actually books. true. Um, and I don't think, I think it's very disingenuous to say that a whole identity is a delusion. Well, I believe that you feel like women. That's oh, not I'm, I'm so excited for the patronizing language we're about to hear. I'm saying, I'm saying there is an objective truth and I don't believe in his truth, her truth, their truth, my truth. Like there is truth and and your so-called truth is not an objective one because it disagrees with medical and scientific consensus. Sorry, sweaty, but you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. You do not have an objective truth because you do not have the necessary understanding of the topic at hand to be able to conceive of the truth. We are not talking in this conversation, the people on this panel that are pro-trans and myself here and everybody in my community, we are not having the same conversation. You've got to catch up. You have to do some learning before you can get to our level. You gotta complete trans people exist 101 before you could get to a 102 conversation. It was not very advanced. Who defined that truth? And like, it's already, it's already defined. And by who? Oh, and here it is. Oh, it's spoiled by the captions. As a Christian, oh my God, the book that I read that was written by men that has been translated to a billion different languages over the course of time and has changed so many times and also doesn't actually have very much against queer people existing. That's why I believe that I have an objective truth based on a religion. Okay, what about religions that don't believe in that? What about religions that don't believe in your transphobic views? What about religions that don't believe in your homophobic views? What then? What about people that are not religious because they exist whether you like it or not, whether it hurts your feelings or not, they exist. What then? Because we all share this society. I'm willing to allow you to continue to be religious and even have these hateful opinions if you want, but I am not willing to allow you to legislate or push people to legislate on the basis of your delusion. I'm sorry, I am not. We recently put out a video where I outline a variety of my views on religion and I don't wanna to have to go into another tangent in this already long video, but come on, let's get serious. I, as a Christian, I believe God is the one who set truth. But who <laughs> defined is that? The truth. Can you tell me who defined that? God. <laughs> Living in the Bible. Oh, wow. What a good response. This is the problem that I have with religion because it allows you to make garbage arguments like that. That answer is literally, quote, because I said so. That was her real answer there. It wasn't God, because we've not gotten any proof that that exists. The actual answer 
that she gave just then is because I said so. She said that. She's just using the idea, the concept of a god as a replacement and because of the tradition of religion in our society that apparently has enough weight to mean anything at all. But with religion taking center stage, it's hard for a lot of trans and non-binary folks like myself to really be able to express who they are. I had to really take on my gender dysphoria in private. I couldn't talk to my mom about it. I couldn't talk to my dad, my siblings, because ultimately I felt like it wasn't going to lead to anything because there wasn't a lot of education in the cis community like there is in the trans and non-binary community. And you know what's fucked up about that? If you have to struggle with these issues on your own, you can't talk to your parents, your friends, your local community, even your church, if you happen to be religious, and you know, critical support to all my religious trans people out there, all my religious queer people out there, keep fighting the good fight, trying to, you know, fix these systems from within, but it's a difficult one. Uh, if you cannot talk to all of those people who are actual living beings in real life, like, who else is there to talk to? Would you say, oh, oh, you could pray? You could talk to God as a religious person. But if all of these religious people are telling you that God thinks that your identity is invalid, that God believes that you should be oppressed on the basis of your identity, God actually has said that that is the case, then how the f*** is this person even going to take solace in the fact that they could pray to God in a vulnerable moment on their own? They can't do this because they don't believe that to be the case, even if they are religious, because they're told all the time that it's not. And that's f because all these religious people that are doing all this crazy shit, all this heinous shit that they get convicted for time and again, a lot of abuse going on, they can confide in God. They're allowed to do that. But trans people are not. Gay people are not. At a certain point in time, black and brown people were not. So I don't give a shit about your religious justification for any of this. Like, literally, if anybody is going to benefit more from the so-called benefits of religion, it's going to be marginalized groups which is why a lot of them actually happen to be religious, because their actual world around them is so fucking confrontational and hostile to them that the only solace they can get is with God, is with praying to whatever higher power or powers they believe in. That's why so many marginalized people happen to also be religious. Not only because they get indoctrinated into religion by people trying to so-called convert them, like what happened with the assimilation of Native Americans and Indian people, but also because they're looking for literally one glimpse of hope that conservative religious people do not want them to have. That was written by a man with his, with his own bias. Who created chromosomes? Yeah, I'm personally not religious and I believe in science. All, when we talk about chromosomes, it goes back to the conversation like, we were- Who created chromosomes? Who created anything? I can draw something right now and create something, sure. I could draw a little stick figure. I could draw that stick figure jumping over a pit of lava and successfully making it to the other side, right? I can create that. I've never, you know, been able to create a species of living being before, though. I don't think you have either. And I don't think anything did. And I don't think we have any proof that anything did. Who created chromosomes? F*** if I know. I just know they exist, and I know I understand them better than you do. That's all I know. Curious to what you think you understand about chromosomes in the first place. We were talking about earlier about being intersex. But we're not talking about intersex. We're talking about people who were born as a male and they try to transition. The whole fact that they're trying to transition into a female in the first place shows that they aren't actually that. that or else and also not even to mention that there are intersex people who are also trans. That happens. You might not like it, but there are intersex trans people out there. One would say that intersex people might be predisposed to being sympathetic to the plight of trans people or be trans people themselves because they have similar experiences on the basis of them being intersex and all of the biological and social aspects that go into that. Or else there would be no need to transition, right? So you this say- This is okay, a I garbage argument, by the way. Oh, if, if a person is assigned by society the gender identity of man based on their biological sex, which is male, then, oh, if they're trying to transition to a woman, clearly they don't even believe they're that. No, I'm pretty sure they understand more about their biology than you do about the concept of biology generally, and probably your own biology. Let's, let's be honest here. But they also understand that it's a social construct that has been literally in flux since the dawn of human existence. Gender roles have not always been what they were. If gender roles stayed stagnant for as long as they've always been, or even from a certain point in time that you seem to, you know, really be excited about going back to and regressing us all to, you would not be able to talk on this Jubilee panel. Let's just be honest. If gender roles never change, you would not be able to be chirping about your transphobic beliefs on a Jubilee panel for people to see. You would be at home 
caring for your children, and tending to your husband's needs. But you don't have to do that, and you're allowed to be on a Jubilee panel, and I'm excited that you're allowed to be on a Jubilee panel, because those gender roles no longer are forced upon you by society. It is the same for people being forced to be one way or another, identifying as a man, woman, or whatever else, and deciding to go against it if they like. It's the same thing. But of course, the benefits that you reap from the fights of actual feminists and people fighting to liberate all oppressed and marginalized people, the benefits that you reap for that you take for granted because of the propaganda that you have been exposed to and the propaganda that you spread to others. Your hateful, fearful ideas of fictional occurrences that have never happened are literally making you work against the actual fights for liberation for women, for black and brown people, for men even, who have been oppressed in a variety of systems, like, I don't know, class, for trans people. All of these civil rights fights, whether you know it or not, I'm telling you right now, you are actively fighting against them. I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to fight for the liberation of all people. Feel like a woman, what is that? What does that feel like? Yeah, how, how does that And how do you know? We're not saying, I'm not saying I feel like a woman, I am a woman. I don't so then why did you I transition? Not, why can't, can't you just present as a man, but be a woman? I because people like to look how they like to look at, Karen. Because people like to look a certain way. Why are there some men that are big, burly, have big beards, very muscular, wide build, and are happy about that? And then some men are Ben Shapiro, why is that? because certain people like to look a certain way. And we understand that nobody's getting hurt by either of these people enjoying looking the way that they do. Transition so I could be who I was. I did not feel like I was the person that I identified with when I was born. So I took the steps to align my outside body with how I feel on the inside. What makes you stand up every day and make you identify as a woman? Let me challenge you on that. I am a woman and I don't like being called a cis woman because yeah, because I'm... I don't have to think about it because I was assigned female at birth and I am female based on my biology. I don't know if she's ever gotten her chromosomes tested. That might be interesting. It's probably overwhelmingly likely that she's actually female, but who knows? I mean, does she know? I don't know. I don't think she knows. Anyway, because I don't have to think about it because of this bullshit that the scientific and medical consensus agrees upon, and also God, which we also, you know, we've litigated that already. She's wearing pants. That's too mask. True. Why the fuck are we showing ankle here? Are we showing ankle or are we safe? What is this scandalous harlotry? If gender roles are supposed to always remain the same, that is more than ankle here. You gotta cover those dogs up. Let me challenge you on that. I am a woman, and I don't like being called a cis woman because I'm not a cis woman, I'm a woman. I'm yeah, not you're a, a cis woman. That still makes you a woman. Much the same way that a trans woman is also still a woman. There is a modifier on there because the broader term is woman. Trans meaning somebody transitioned to being a woman socially, medically, or both, and cis woman, meaning that you were identified as and assigned female at birth, and that's what you stuck to, because that's what you believe that you are. <laughs> Transforms when they learn about adjectives. You, you, listen, this, this is advanced stuff, all right? a birthing person i'm a yeah. mother so get mad at the terminology not at trans it's people. your it's new it's terminology but this is what uh, yeah, yeah. this is what i notice a lot of cis women do the terminology has been around for so long cis is a prefix cis means same instead of getting mad at trans and non-binary people for using updated terminology get mad at webster you're not going along with the times and being educated on True. the different pronouns. That, and the Though, different to be fair, these are the people that get mad at Webster's Dictionary acknowledging scientific and medical consensus and understanding that there is a difference between gender and sex. They do get mad at that, to be fair. Uh, it's uh, petulant and childish every time they do, and frankly, embarrassing, but they do it. Identity. It's never a good yeah, argument. Some of the pronouns are, are, are kind of ridiculous. Yeah, and how many people use them, Karen? How many people use these neo-pronouns? I don't give a damn what pronouns you use. If you say you're more comfortable being called Zezer, okay, I'll call you Zezer. I don't give a shit. It doesn't affect me. You know, it might not be something I'm used to, but I'll get used to it if I care about you and respect you as a human being. You bet your ass I'll get used to it. Because it's not hurting nobody. It's not hurting me. It's not hurting you. It's not hurting anybody else. I'll call you Faye Fair. I don't give a fuck. Why do I care? I mean, the... I'm normal. Why do I, why do I give a shit? To be, with all due respect, I mean, I mean you, you, I'm sure you, you have to agree some of the pronouns I don't think use. they're ridiculous. I think they're very expansive. Trans and non-binary people just want you to respect their chosen pronoun. We're Isn't that interesting that that's, a, that's the response to? I'm sorry, because every time, you know, all the trans women on this panel have been spitting the entire time. 
But like the proposition is that, oh, these are literally just adjectives. Cis means same, meaning that you identify with the gender you were assigned at birth. Trans means that you transitioned to that identity. They're just adjectives, but they're both women at the same time. Like it doesn't matter. Most rational people understand this. And, and, and then like the retort is, oh, well, you have to at least agree with me that some of these pronouns are kind of ridiculous. Like who's calling themselves a Nintendo 64 or Nintendo 64? -er? Like what is, what is, anyway, nobody's doing this. Get serious. They're not trying to force pronouns. And even if they are, why do I care? I don't give a shit on you. Just understand that the terminology is going to continue to grow. If you're willing to educate yourself and understand, then you've got it. The ability True. to give birth is a woman's greatest strength. The oh, words jubilee, why these questions, these content fiends, these absolute content golems. I cannot believe this. What are these questions, man? They just want vitriol because it's good for views. It's so annoying. The ability to give birth is a woman's greatest strength. This is actually not the worst prompt of the, of the last three. My, my exasperation was more so because of the last ones that we saw and then this one. I will agree that, like, cis women being able to give birth, you know, trans men being able to give birth, intersex people being able to give birth, should they have the capacity to do so? Pretty poggers. I think that's kind of cool because it allows our civilization, our human species, to keep going. You know, and frankly, I would like to see the human species continue to grow and evolve and stay alive, ideally in the best conditions possible, uh, which requires me and other people having these arguments, right? I think it's pretty cool. I don't think, however, that giving birth is the only thing women can do or are good for, because I'm not a misogynist. Uh, I'm not Matt Walsh. I'm not Ben Shapiro. I'm not Steven Crowder. I'm not Tucker Carlson. I'm not Jesse Waters. I'm not Donald Trump. I'm not any of these. I'm not your misogynistic uncle at the Thanksgiving dinner table. I don't believe that giving birth is all that women have to offer. And I don't think it's their greatest strength either, because for one, I don't know why we have to be weighing the different strengths that women have. Some women are really good at caring for their community. Some women are profoundly impactful in their communities because they engage with everybody and do mutual aid. They, you know, they volunteer at soup kitchens or care for the homeless or volunteer at foster homes or orphanages. Like, and they're really good at that. Some men are as well. I would say that's incredibly more impactful and profound than simply having the biological capacity to get pregnant and have a child. I think that that's much more impactful. Now, it's also cool if they're able to have a child if they want to. Why not? I, I don't care. Like, there are so many strengths that women, men, and everybody else have that the idea that we would be ranking them at all, I don't give a shit. Also, the implication that infertile cis women are less valuable? Yeah, well, I mean... Let's not get into that. Let's not get into the conservative women here who probably wouldn't identify as feminists, you know, talking about women as they age and how a lot of what they've said about trans people could also be applied to women as they age. We're very ageist and misogynistic sweaty. You don't even have to get into that. We might, but... Can the disagree step I gotta forward? speed this up. God damn it. <sighs> I'm, not, I'm not able to have children. So I'm still strong. I'm, I'm funny. Oh, wow. I'm physically strong. I'm, All right, I'm, so we've got a conservative woman whose arguments that a lot of people who agree with her would say would devalue her as a person, but we're disagreeing here. I'm very excited to see where this goes. I'm smart, and I have a lot of strength. I don't believe that having a baby is the greatest strength. Hell yeah. Can. I cannot have kids due to medical issues um, from a medical procedure that I had when I was younger. And it's, uh, it's a hard subject to talk about. It it's, doesn't mean I'm any, I'm any less of a woman, but can we get another question? I don't, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's fucked, isn't it? One of the it's a really fucked up question. I agree. I'm glad we have somebody with the lived experience, even though that they are the conservative side here and the transphobic side here, has the lived experience to understand that this is a garbage question. It's co incredibly f***ed up, especially to somebody who, in this case, seems like wishes they had the capacity to have children, but she doesn't because of unfortunate circumstance. Much the same way, there are a lot of trans women out there. I don't understand it, frankly, but there are a lot of trans women out there that wish that they could have children and cannot. I'm pretty sure they might feel fairly similarly and have as sad and unfortunate and frankly moving stories as what that woman just said. But unfortunately, it seems like she would be taken more seriously.
that I regret was the fact that I w would never be able to do that. But I was honored in the ability to participate it from the other side. Women are amazing. <laughs> they don't just deal with that, so. Uh, while giving birth is not a woman's greatest strength, I do think that only biological women are capable of going through that process and, and bringing life into the world. All right, okay, where are we going with that? Yeah, if you don't have a uterus, unfortunately, you're not gonna have the capacity to give birth. There are a lot of trans men that do have the capacity to give birth and that have and are happy about it. And some that aren't, I would imagine. So, so where are you going with this? I need to push back on that because we're all right, okay. Okay, she left it there. All right, thank God. I, I mean, you know, I would certainly try to pry more out of that because for as many contradictions as we've already seen, we got more. Freaking that trans men sure. and trans masculine people can also give birth as well. True. And I don't think it's fair to just set it on one group that says that just biological women have that power to just give birth. And we have to be very clear when we look at the nuances of birth. I recognize that there are people who have different identities. There are uh, biological women who identify as men and then go on to, to give birth. Uh -huh. uh, I would argue, however, that those people are still biological women. Yeah, I mean, biologically, as their sex would dictate, uh, yeah, sure, they were probably, you know, they, they were born, they have a uterus, uh, and they have the capacity to give birth, but they don't identify as women, so they are not women. They might be assigned female at birth, and their biology might dictate that they have the capacity to give birth, but they don't identify as women. I'm not exactly sure what you're arguing here. And I know that is something that can offend many, but... Uh... It's not offensive on the basis of like, oh my god, how could you say such a thing? It's offensive on the basis of, I wish you would be better than this. I wish you would have the actual capacity to understand what even I, a dumbass on the internet, have been able to understand about the medical and scientific consensus on the difference between gender and sex. But clearly, we're not at that point yet. So I'm not angry. I'm not offended in an angry sense. I'm just disappointed. That stands as my belief. So the correct term is actually cisgendered woman. Um, cis means same. It means that you identify with the birth that you were assigned. And so, you know, I just really, really wish that we would kind of be a little bit more mutable to the terminology. Because I think that's what really is going to open up that dialogue and that discussion. If I may. They have no coherent views, just whatever at the time helps them push their hate. Yeah, and usually it's to secure power or a feeling of power over others. Uh, so a feeling of power for the people that are not in positions of power, but a feeling of it. Or actual power in the workplace, in the home, in the political sphere, in you know the economic sphere, right? Hey, I think the crux of the conversation kind of comes back to are trans women women? Yes, and they are, and here we go. And I think if we don't agree there, it's going to be very difficult to kind of keep the conversation going. Yeah, unfortunately, we have to educate you on uh, basic biological facts and like intro level biological understandings and, uh, you know, the concept of social concepts. Uh, it's not really the problem of trans people that this conversation is difficult because we know more than you. We understand more than you. We understand basic biology, and we also understand uh, further than basic biology, advanced biology. You've already having difficulty with, like, literally middle school biology. We can help you with that, but you seem very, very reticent to take that help. Or even agree on the points that you guys are talking about because if we don't believe that trans women are women, then the conversation kind of ends there in terms of whether they're, like men can give birth or not, if that makes sense. Yeah, so what's really cool about that is that the conversation ends there because at that point, you have expressed and demonstrated that you do not have the capacity to continue engaging in the conversation. The interesting thing about that is that the conversation ends for you. The conversation does not end for the trans women on the program. The conversation does not end for me or anybody in my audience. The conversation only ends for you because you do not have the requisite knowledge to continue participating in it. If you were to learn the actual medical and scientific consensus on the matter, you would be able to continue having the conversation, but you don't. So how would you define womanhood? Being cringe. You sound like Matt Walsh. Sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Womanhood to me is about standing in integrity. It is about being confident in who you are. And Holy based. Now what's interesting about that is that for some reason our society has given that definition to men. I don't know why that is because literally anybody has the capacity to be confident. Everybody has the ability to be confident, but for some reason that is a manly trait. That's a masculine trait. I don't understand that.
To be confident in who you are and to stand with integrity about who you are is being a woman. Absolutely. Because you know what that allows you to do? That allows you to fight for your rights. And historically, women have been mistreated by patriarchal and misogynistic systems. If you understand who you are, if you understand and have integrity in who you are, and if you're confident in who you are, you can fight the fights necessary to attain your equal rights with the people trying to oppress you. In this case, misogynistic men, misogynistic women, and the patriarchal system that we live under. Absolutely a great answer. Me as a black trans woman should not be a threat to you. And what I see from a lot of cisgender women is they're trying to deem what womanhood is supposed to look like. I have my own perspective of womanhood. The, I, I guess I could I, I guess I could say also that a lot of feminists are like made fun of as being so-called manly or masculine, right? Like a lot of feminists who do activism and participate in protests and like get angry uh, and fight back are actually like called, oh my God, you're so not womanly. You're acting like a man right now, sweaty, by misogynist. So I know, I, I, you know, I guess you know, it works to their benefit in that way, I suppose. We can coexist in the same world, but the reality is we get so stuck on parts. Having a vagina is not the only thing that makes you a woman. I'm sorry. It takes integrity, it takes courage, it takes lifting other women up. It takes those things to begin to defy womanhood and there's so many other different things. Can I ask you a question? So what's really interesting too is that I would argue that she is actually more of an actualized woman than anybody on this panel because of the fact that she can define what it means to be a woman. She can explain what that's like. She can use that confidence to fight for the rights of all women, not just trans women. And she could stand firm in that belief. To the contrary, the conservatives on this panel seem to think that it is just biology. They just happen to be women based on the circumstances of their birth, the chromosomes that they have, and the genitals that they have. That's not a good argument. Because the capacity to give birth is not the only thing that makes one a woman. Because then the woman in the middle on the right there would not be considered one because she does not have the capacity to have a child right? You are actively working against the liberation of women from the patriarchal and misogynistic systems that they are unfortunately subject to if you do not have a holistic understanding of what a woman is, and that's simply it. If all it takes for you to understand that you're a woman is the body parts that you have and the gendered roles that society has told you you should engage with and in a lot of ways coerces you to engage with, then you are not as full or actualized as a woman because you cannot defend your identity, your existence in as firm a way as somebody who has a more holistic understanding of it. Sure. Um, okay, so if I were a white person and oh I Oh my said God, dude, we've been through this. Oh my god, isn't drag just blackface for- Nobody cares, bro! We have had such a good line of dialogue and thought from the trans women on this panel, and every f***ing time we get to anything of value! Oh my god, isn't it just blackface? Oh wow! F*** off, man. This is not a conversation. You're not trying to talk to anybody right now. You're trying to shut people up. That's what you're doing. You're not trying to talk. You're trying to shut people up. You're trying to use garbage f***ing analogies that don't actually work out in your favor if you think about them for more than two seconds. And you're trying to stop people from talking because you're uncomfortable with the things that they are saying because you know you are not performing well in this conversation. You know that. It is so sad, man. Blackness is about integrity and courage and kind of the same thing that you've used okay. to define womanhood. And then I said, I want to transition into a, a black person and I'm white. Mm -hmm. And I'm redefining what blackness is to fit what yeah. I view it as, right? There's no objective reality of what blackness is. Yeah. Would you consider that appropriation or do you think that's something I should be allowed to do? I consider that dodging. And True. I consider that Oh my God, I know that we saw this already, but I forgot. I for gore. I didn't know how we led into this. I just remembered now, based on the based response, uh, you know, that we're seeing here. Anyway, yeah, sorry. Holy or do true. you think that's something I should be allowed to do? I consider that dodging, and I consider that comparing and apples to- And I don't think, thank the fucking Lord above that we have a black trans woman on the panel. Holy shit. Like, if Jubilee only got white trans people on this panel, Holy f would it be difficult for them to get around this line of argumentation? Oh my god. And it's not a good line of argumentation. It's garbage. And it's unfortunate that simply having a person here 
who happens to be black is what it takes to be able to have like a you know a very firm response that's garbage i think any reasonable person should be able to understand that identifying as a woman is not the same as fucking blackface considering the history of blackface and the fact that that analogy alone is delegitimizing the actual harm that blackface has caused the black community anyway oranges because race and gender identity are two separate different things because when we look at race we have to look at many many different structures of what whiteness and white supremacy looks like and how white supremacy can be manipulated into other things and what happens is the closer you are in proximity to whiteness you're able to weaponize it against other people it reminds me a lot of rachel dolezal and that's really interesting too right like if black people could like transition to being white and be seen as white people in every way and had the benefits and privileges that white people get in our white supremacist system, they would actually gain a lot from doing so because of that fucked up systemically racist system, right? However, if we agree, and I don't know if these conservatives do, that women in society currently, while in a better position than they ever have been, are still oppressed on the basis of their gender identity, why the f would anybody ever transition from being a man in that dominant power group to being a woman? You would be literally shooting yourself in the foot in that way if the only reason you were doing it were for some so-called privileges you might gain. That doesn't happen. And that's not to say, before you get all f***ing excited about it, that that's what trans men are doing as well, because they're not. I know that's a very misogynistic and, frankly, bigoted opinion in general in a variety of ways to suggest, but that's not the case either. Trans men are still seen as women in our society, unfortunately. They do not reap the same benefits and privileges as cis men. For a lot of trans men, they are infantilized, much the same way that, you know, cis women are, that trans women are. Uh, and they're not seen as men, they're seen as, you know, women in denial or whatever, right? It's garbage who, you know, masqueraded as a black woman. It really did open up many more doors of conversations around it, but it's still wrong. It's still not fair because she would still ultimately have a privilege that I as a black trans woman would not begin to have. What's, what's interesting is that we're, we're talking about race and, and gender, or as we probably like to call it on our side, sex. Race yeah, because you don't understand the difference. We're not, in this instance, we're not talking about race and gender or race and sex. In this specific conversation, we're talking about race, gender, and sex. All three. Actually has a more understandable structure for people being transracial. Race does actually exist on a spectrum. I'm biracial. Many perceive me to be black, even though I am also half white and half black. We label people like President Obama as a black president, even though he is as well. Oh my God, she's so close. She's so close, but she's so far. Oh, no. This has never had binary markers. It does exist on the spectrum. Gender, however, does have binary markers. As much as we- But it doesn't. There is a spectrum. There are cis men. There are cis women. Males, females. There are intersex. Everybody, when you are in utero, goes through a variety of hormone washes, but we all end up with, you know, let's say in the instance of, you know, mammals, generally speaking, nipples. However, unless a male, a cis man, goes on HRT, they don't have the capacity to produce breast milk. However, they can gain that through HRT. You know, you know, I want these woke conservatives to hear about that. They'll get really sad and, uh, you know, maybe angry snowflakes. So, so, like, we get a variety of hormone washes in utero that end up determining, based on our chromosomes, what parts we'll end up having. But we all start from the same point and stay at that point until those hormone washes change, you know, the body parts you end up having. It's not as clear-cut as people want it to seem. And another thing you don't want to tell woke conservatives, if you're on HRT for long enough, and if you've had a variety of medical procedures, you actually end up resembling more the sex that you are, you know, have transitioned to. So for instance, a trans woman that undergoes HRT for long enough will develop characteristics that make that person more identifiable as a woman. And not only that, but as a biological woman. If they have a vaginoplasty, you become almost indistinguishable. The only point you can go to is like, okay, well, let's look at your chromosomes, which most people don't even know of their own. Most people don't know what their chromosomes are. And they're like, okay, well, what about your, your skeleton? That can change too. If you get on puberty blockers and if you get on HRT early enough, and even if you have gone through some of your puberty or if not all, there have been, you know, a variety of mixed uh, experiences here, your skeleton can actually change. It's most common uh, if, you know, you go through the puberty that is the gender you identify it with.
right? Not your biological sex is puberty, right? Like you can actually have those skeletal changes happen because you're not born as the adult skeleton that you die with. You know, hopefully you end up passing of old age when you are an adult. Uh, you are born with a skeleton that changes over time. We can change that as well. So even that's not a good example. So you don't have anything. And that's not even to get into the argument of the fact that we're talking about not only race in this dumbass analogy that was brought up, but also gender identity and biological sex. Try as much as we change the way that we self-present, chromosomes are not going to change. Yeah, but uh, who, what do we do in society that's based off chromosomes? Literally nothing. Literally nothing. You see Blair White on the street and you just expect that that person is a woman because she is. And then you also expect, well, that person's a, you know, a cis woman because these people conflate, you know, biological sex and gender. And then do you think of Blair White's chromosomes when you look at her? I don't because I'm a normal person because I'm not weird. I don't look at people that I see on the street and be like, oh my God, I wonder what chromosomes there are. And Lord help me, if those chromosomes don't match up to how they're identifying the clothes they're wearing, then oh my God. Like, I don't think about like that because I'm not in the head. I'm not weird, man. I am normal. I don't look at people and be like, oh, what are your chromosomes? Because we don't do anything society based on that. And uh, that's just a reality. All right, I'm going to bring up a little point here because you, you talked about the binary side of, of uh, gender. Mm -hmm. Well, I was born a little of both. Oh, uh, shit. I Tell me we have an intersex trans woman on the program, on the broadcast. I could be jumping the gun. Let's see. I've never had my chromosomes checked, but since I, ha I fathered two children, I'm assuming I have the correct male chromosomes. So I was intersexed, and, and there's a lot of reasons that that happens, uh, none of which are well studied or understood, but uh, a friend of mine in the uh, pediatric uh, trauma world says about one in 150 kids come out with some degree of ambiguity in their gender. For me... So that, we should say in their biological sex, if we're talking about intersex people, these terms get conflated. That appeared as always feeling out of place and i'm for the first week of my life i was in intersex people are as common as gingers or people with red hair and freckles or whatever is that true that's interesting the uh, surgical wards at uh you know naval hospital in san diego getting pieces of me cut off so and then they gave me testosterone for the first 11 years of my life i i, I <laughs> So, I, and by the way, you, we should say that all of that was without this person's consent. If you do not believe that, you know, children can't consent to puberty blockers and eventually HRT, then you should also not believe that they could consent to getting genital surgeries that an intersex person might get without their consent. You should also then not believe that people can be circumcised because that is also done without consent and without any actual biological necessity. It is not necessary. You don't need to do that. In fact, it is natural to not be circumcised. Most of the time, it's just religious or cultural justifications that, you know, allow for circumcision of people with penises. And that's not even to mention female genital mutilation as well. Like, you should be against those things if you're trying to be consistent. But, you know, people can't be consistent in this if you're anti-trans because you're inherently incoherent and delusional. Unfortunately, wish you weren't. I wish the world were truly sexually binary. It was I don't, uh, but I can understand. I can sympathize. Make it so much easier. <laughs> but there is a little bit of a smear. And, you know, as a trans person, I'm a very conservative trans person. Uh, um, I don't see the huge gender spectrum that a lot of people in the, in the trans community do. Do I feel better having transitioned? Yes, absolutely. Hell I yeah. used to live in a little shell, you know, very large shell, but, uh, you know, um, but, you know, now I'm, you know, much more open about who I am. You know, is that the only thing that generally defines a woman? No, I don't think that is the only thing that generally defines a woman. Right. I think there are a lot of women oh boy. who uh, may be on our side of the argument. Oh, so, I'm will so excited. So we got all this good from the people on the believing in reality side. Let's get over to the delusionals. <sighs> to maybe invalidate your experiences by saying you you can't give birth or you you can't have a period and while those things may be true i'm sure there's a lot of other different struggles that you all are going through and uh yeah i i would truly believe that you you probably are highly discriminated against in in our society and i'm okay with that because everything that i have suggested and said on this panel has a direct through line to that oppression and discrimination occurring are you insane what are you saying?
Why? Why would you? I mean, maybe this is like a uh, accidental honesty on her part. She's like, yeah, I do believe that you were discriminated against on the basis of your identity. Uh, and also everything that I've been saying has been used to discriminate against you. And I'm just not going to look into that at all because, you know, that would hurt my feelings or whatever. Like, what are you saying? And it is hard to be you. It is hard to go through the things that you go through and have to deal with some of the responses that you get from people. And, you know, it's, it's not a struggle that I, I would she wish gets on there. myself at all. It's not a struggle I, I hope she gets there. Oh, my God. Maybe. Maybe from this point on, I think this person on the right or on the, the closest to the camera here, the one showing ankle, even though, you know, she thinks general shouldn't change or whatever. I think she's like too far gone and very ideologically activist being transphobic because, you know, God is her answer for it. Maybe, you know, she's a little bit closer to being nudged in the correct direction. Push on my worst enemy. Trans women should be allowed to compete in women's sports. Oh my god, literally, who cares, man? I don't care. We've litigated this so many times, man. There are certain sports where the inclusion of trans women, uh, you know, the conversation gets a bit more complex because there are a variety of changes that happen to the body due to the presence of testosterone and blah, 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 blah. The amounts of times that this is having an impact on anybody is so, so tiny so as to be insignificant that I don't care. And there are a variety of sports that ha there is no issue that for some reason transphobic people still have issue with. So like, I don't know, man, like even esports, there are tr like pro trans women in electronic sports playing video games competitively and they still get shit like, oh my God, a, a, a person pretending to be a woman, a man had to go and be the one to win because women can't do it. It's just a way to be misogynistic as well as transphobic, by the way. Uh oh, and like when the one trans woman was winning Jeopardy a bunch, oh my God, you mean a, a man was winning Jeopardy a bunch because men are inherently smarter than women to you or something? It's just a way to be misogynistic and then also transphobic. The misogyny there comes first. <sighs> it's very annoying. Like, I, I just don't care. Oh my God, it's such a long I segment. I think that trans women have every right to compete in women's sports. When trans women are on hormones, the hormones break their body down. True, this is also what I was gonna mention. If you put a, and I would know this because I'm going through it. If you put an AMAP person as I am, a male, if you put that person on HRT, meaning that you suppress their testosterone, to levels around the levels of testosterone in a cis woman, or perhaps even below, and then also supplement that with estrogen around the levels that a cis woman would have or maybe above, the ideally you're getting to around, you know, the average levels, your body changes so much. I, before HRT, was able to exercise every other day relatively strenuously and be able to recover like that. I was able to recover so quickly. Now, I recover at a snail's pace compared to that. Oh my God. Like I'm, I'm working my legs or my arms and I'm sore for so much longer and I'm not changing the exercise I'm doing. It's just because of the hormonal changes in my body, it now takes longer for my muscles to recover. That is biology. So usually we expect trans women, barring any inability to attain it, be it societal, systemic, financial, or what have you, most trans women you would expect or and even hope if they wanted should be on HRT. And if that is the case, they are likely to not have these supposed advantages that cis men have, especially if they're on HRT for a long enough amount of time. Now, then the argument becomes, oh, bone density, bone density, whatever. But like, it is such an insignificant amount of times that this is an actual, like, happening that I, I just don't care. Having gender affirming surgery breaks down the body. And so I think we really need to be educated before we jump to a conclusion that trans women are stronger than cis women in sports. True. And it depends on the sport as well. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, so excited. I find it interesting that you assume the people assume. who disagree with you are uneducated. Well, it's not really an assumption. It's just a statement of fact. Because she is telling you shit that you did not know. Or she is telling you the actual facts of the matter that you have heard, but do not want to believe because it is inconvenient to your narrative or hurts your feelings. I'm sorry, but that's a reality. If you disagree with it, you're delusional. And it's not my problem. I'm sorry and I, I will speak out against that. I think the research shows that uh, trans women do happen to have a biological advantage um, against biological women. Uh Are we gonna cite this research? No.
Are we going to understand anything about what it means to transition and the changes that happen to your body? Clearly not. Even though you are taking hormones and that does start to change your body and level things out, we are talking about primarily people who have transitioned post-puberty, which means they do have male bone density, male wingspan, male hand size, <sighs> feet size, lung capacity. All of these things are going against women, biological women. When but there are more women that have those traits that are participate in sports. There are so many biological women that have the same traits that you are describing that are still cis women. There are more of them than there are trans women participating in women's sports. This is why people like Castor Semenya get so much from transphobes. As a cis woman, or, uh, is she intersex? I don't fucking know. She just has higher than average levels of testosterone, which gives her some advantages, right? But she's a cis woman. Not only this, what about Michael Phelps? Look at Michael Phelps. You're telling me that this is not an unfair advantage? This is a cis man participating in men's swimming or whatever. This man has exceptional lung capacity, which allows him to power through races without being overcome by fatigue. Yeah, that's whatever. Okay, cool. Fine. Whatever. You can train some of that, maybe. Though I'm sure some of that is physical as well. But not only this, he's got relatively short legs, which reduce his drag in the pool. He also has a long torso, which helps him pull himself through the water more quickly because he's got shorter legs. Not only that, the man has an absurd 80 inch wingspan, which gives him significantly longer than average arms, even for someone of his height, which is six foot four inches. This man is biologically predisposed to have an advantage against other cis men in men's sports, not to mention trans men. King Aquaman literally built different. Should he be precluded from participating in swimming? Because this doesn't seem fair to me. Obviously not. Trans women start to enter their spaces, their sports, and compete against them. Uh, and, and this yeah, so what's cool is that trans women are not entering women's spaces. Trans women are entering their spaces because they are women. Sorry, sweaty. Sorry if that hurts your feelings. It's really concerning for me. I think for me, it's not a question of whether or not trans women can compete in sports. It's a question of how can we change the institution of sports in this country to make it equitable and to create more opportunities. I'd lose every single sport up against a cis woman. I don't know how you identify. Feel free to let me know if you are comfortable to do so. But I, I do want to say that that made me think that there are a lot of cis men that would also have difficulty competing against cis women in women's sports. Do you really think Ben Shapiro is going to be able to beat some of the fastest runners in women's sprint? Come on. There are some twinked up cis men out there that would have difficulty with the same amount of training going up against a lot of these cis women. Take a five foot six man, cis man, put him in the WNBA against some of these six foot cis women. This man is not going to have the greatest time. I can tell you that much opportunity for cis women for trans women. And like, that's kind of like why I wanted to actually ask you all, like, what is your relationship to sports been? I don't think you have to have a direct relationship. Oh, so you don't have one though. Oh, how precious. Ship to sports to realize that women are being affected by this issue. And I do uh, reject the idea of equity. We also haven't seen much evidence that women in an aggregate are being affected by this, much less women in women's sports. This seems to be a very small and localized occurrence, so much as it is an occurrence. Uh, there is no way to, to come about an equality of outcome, which is what equity is saying. There's a reason that uh, women's sports are, are less funded and less watched than men's sports. It's because because men's seem to excel athletically. And no, no, and no, you, you misunderstand. It's because of misogyny. It's because women are seen as less than, and therefore nobody cares about their sports, which is fucked up. Not only this, but sports have not always been gender segregated. There was a really good thread that I read in a previous video. I forget which one it was, uh, but it was one of our previous videos about women's sports where there are very many sports that they were not gender segregated and they only began to become gender segregated because there were women, cis women, who were outperforming cis men. So those cis men, because of the misogynistic framework that they're born into and taught, ended up creating, with their power to do so, different leagues just for men so that they could not be outcompete by cis women. There is a very long and storied history about the segregation of sports that does not coincide with whatever the f*** we're hearing here from this person.
seem to press the bounds of athleticism way farther than women do. We now exist on a slippery slope. Oh, but this literally, a it's called a fallacy for a reason. If it's female sports, is it then female locker rooms? Is it then- Who f***ing asked? Who cares? Then female prisons, which we're now seeing uh, becoming an issue here in California. Yeah, what do you mean becoming an issue? That's This is not happening in any significant amount. And also, if you put trans women in men's prisons, which logically following you would agree with, they are more likely to be the victims of harm, and we have studies that actually show that. So once again, our feelings are getting in the way of facts here. Unsurprisingly, where biological male inmates are being put in female facilities because has there been harm described from this happening? And is it in any significant amount that it would actually be read as a problem by any normal, well adjusted, rational, logical human being? I'll wait. Identify as women. We have to discuss. Oh! So, no harm is being described. Just the idea, the hypothetical, maybe, what if it could possibly be the case that it might happen? Juxtaposed against if you put trans women in men's prisons, we have actual evidence of this being a consistent and ongoing problem to the point where they create separate wings of the prison for trans and queer people to be in. How much we give into the feelings of wanting everybody to but be- But you don't care about stopping abuse from happening. You don't care about that. You're fine with it continuing, following your logic. You just want to be able to weaponize the identity of trans people to attain whatever it is you seek to attain from it. That's it. Accepted, and how much we are willing to do that at the expense of biological women. It's not going to be at the expense of biological women, and no actual harm has been described here. Very cool. A complete nothing segment. We could have com Jubilee could have edited that entire thing out, and we would have missed nothing. I use myself as an example. Um, this is about how big I was in junior high school and, and early high school. I used to be able to walk up to a V8 engine block, pick it up off the floor, and set it on a table. And if I was in powerlifting or weightlifting, that amount of, uh, I mean, that advantage was just unbelievable. I've been on hormones for 15 years. Did it weaken me? Absolutely. Did my, you know, my bone density really hasn't changed. My muscle muscular hasn't changed. And this is not a binary question. There's a lot of nuances involved. True. I, I just so what's interesting about that is that I agree that there's a lot of nuances involved and I've gotten into some of them. But the anti-trans side here doesn't seem to suggest that there's nuance involved. They are literally very binary about it. I'm willing to get into the nitty gritty, even though I think it's tremendously boring and I don't give a shit really about it, but I'm willing to get into it as I have. But clearly I know more than these people. I wanna ask a question for what you were saying. Can you throw out some statistics? I don't think you need oh. to have there. So there's, oh. there's oh. an abundance of research. There's even oh. trans- oh, There's an abundance of research, but can you throw out any of them? Can you get back to us later and show us that you don't have to do it right on the spot here but if you want to show it to us after the fact once you've given the time to collect it would you like to show it to us because i don't think you have it so if you can't throw out the statistics we're not doing enough of the work True. and let's also disagree. be clear let's also well, we need to have more research what do you mean you disagree she's literally saying we're not doing enough work to have the research to understand if this is a problem or not that's what she's saying. I don't think she understands that, frankly. Like, I don't think she's denying the fact that we should have more research done, that we should have the ability to get more statistics. I don't think that that's the case. I think that she's getting too emotional and excited, as I've been getting emotional and excited this entire video, but to the point where it's clouding her judgment and she is responding to something that wasn't being said. She's saying that we need to be able to have those statistics, those studies that you clearly do not have. That's what she's saying. And if you deny what she is saying there, if given the chance to reapproach that as it's been rephrased, because I do think she misunderstood, if you continue to hold your same point of view, you are anti-empiricist. You are anti-science. You are anti-research. You are anti the idea of gaining knowledge, which in my view is a very common human experience. So be clear, there are some cisgender women who produce high levels of testosterone as well. And so we really have to unpack it from all different sides here. Can you produce... So, so, so what's super cool about this is that it is a very nuanced conversation. And what's so tiring about the conversation is that the anti-trans side doesn't agree that it's a nuanced conversation. That's the difficulty here.
statistics about the bone density of biological men and how it changes upon being on hormones and whether or not it levels out to biological women. I actually Can you produce the studies and the data that suggest that this is done in actual harm to anybody? Because I don't think you can either. I cannot because when I would think of those statistics, I would think it was BS, to be quite honest with you, because the reality of it is we could talk about statistics and the research all day long, but it's about experience. We're going to be looking more at the experience because, again, when we look at cisgender women who produce... I will say, I don't know that that's the best counter argument to this point, um, but, you know, what can you do? High levels of testosterone and who have been kicked out of sports. Mm -hmm and been disqualified from teams but this based on something that they biologically cannot control, then what are we really talking about here? Well, we're talking about, I mean, data. So and at that point, so like, like, like she's saying, if there is a cis woman who has higher levels of testosterone, which gives her an advantage, then how is Michael Phelps allowed to be in the leagues that he competes in? If he has such an insane biological advantage on the basis of his fucking skeletal structure, that is overwhelming and we're data that is overwhelming you haven't been able to produce it you literally said you haven't been able to produce it how can you simultaneously say that there's an overwhelming abundance of data and then also say that you cannot produce it talking about what is also we're capable of seeing with our, our human eyes i think it's very clear that if you compare maybe you to the rest of us there is going to be a strength difference there's going to be a bone density that. difference but you're just saying that you don't know until we, can, we physically do something can, and just perceiving and assuming just because I look a certain way, that's not fair. Me, her could look, the, we could look completely different or whatever, but she may be stronger than me. I agree, but she we may know. have She have much more agility and vitality than I do. We don't know that until you actually A lot of it. that's gonna be in training as well. I'm until saying it has, it has been done. studied, it's been done. And it's been so. done. But you can't produce it. I've seen it but it's time, an assumption. Time, time again. But we're only it's, going it's, on assumption at this point. Because again, it's not assumption when we see, when we see it's it. not, oh, it's, it's science, but you have not been able to produce it. You literally admitted that you cannot, you cannot Maybe get away the, with the this. the news cycle that I watch, but I see it a lot. I see it quite often. Oh my God. And what news are you watching? Um, trans women beating. I mean, I'm by far. And you don't see women Biological dominating women. in the men's sports, right? You don't see. Uh, oh God. <sighs> this is why this conversation is so profoundly boring to me because we're not having a conversation once again. Leah Thomas was very good before her transition when she was competing against cis men. Once Leah Thomas underwent her transition and started competing against women, she ended up not faring as well. Actually, not exceptionally great. <sighs> trans men going into men's sport and just completely dominating and wiping the field with them. This is what happens when you, in my opinion, twist God's design. Oh, and who gives a shit? I don't care. We're already talking about a very complex topic. Now you're gonna bring your delusions into it. I don't give a you fuck. You go against God's design. You create these problems that you wouldn't have if you weren't going against what God intended. Going against what God intended. Shut the fuck up. You're going against what God intended right now based on the fucking misogynistic shit I hear from religion about the women's place being in the home or whatever the fuck. I don't give a damn. Cover up those damn ankles and get back to, you know, serving your fucking husband or whatever, if that's what you believe. I don't, I think it's great she's like able to be on this fucking platform, but if that's what you're believing, and if you think you're going against God's design by being a trans person, then maybe be a little bit logically consistent and adapt your own behavior to match it. Your side a little bit on that. And let me say one more thing, and I'm supporting you on this one. There are, I mean, there's a great deal of, of women that, and actually there was a lady in the last Olympics that they actually disqualified until she went on. Uh, I, I, I love being a better feminist than these people. I love it so much. It's so helpful. God damn. She went on uh, androgen blockers to knock her testosterone down to a female level. Like I said, this is not a, a binary yes or no question. And and the whole idea of messing with what, you know, God puts up, you know, I God put me up, okay, if you want to take that. Um, you know, and I had this conversation with a very uh, religious man in San Diego, and he was like, oh, I don't quite know how to deal with that. And God made you that way, but he didn't make a lot of the people <laughs> transitioning. I understand. You know, but God how is that, how can that be your take? If God has created cis people, how the f do trans people exist? Because we know that they do. 
You might be delusional and think that they don't, but we know that they do, empirically. So if they do, then clearly if a god exists and has designed everybody, then why the f*** he made me trans? Why would he do this? Do you have that little respect in your god, the almighty, that you think that he would make mistakes? That he would f*** up? Clearly not. Otherwise, you gotta do some Hail Marys or go to the confessional or something. Clearly, if your god does exist, then there is a reason why trans people also exist. Seems like he might have made people trans. God also or understands female. my transition. God, first of Bro, all- God gave this woman in the middle astigmatism. How dare you go against the word of God and wear glasses. Gotta take that shit off your face, four eyes, specs. Why are you wearing glasses for? You're going against God's design, nerd ass. I knew what I was going to be in my life. God already knew I was going to be trans when God put me here. So, so I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair when female. people Girl. dip and dab. He, he made her trans, which coincidentally, that lived experience of being trans has put this person in a position to understand more about literally every single topic that's been brought up than you do. So your participation trophy in this instance, being born female, hasn't really done you much good. Your relationship with God is personal. Yes. It's sacred. Let's and I don't think it's fair when other people dip and dab in other people's relationship with God when they don't understand what they go through. God still blesses me as a trans woman. Let's God go. blesses you as a cisgender woman. God is embodied in me as a trans person. I don't think it's fair, again, when we judge people's personal relationship and it's so easy to make this argument too. God, gender identity. It's so easy to make this argument because, frankly, it is just as irrational as saying, like, oh, well, why didn't God create you to be female if you were made to be a trans woman? Well, God made me to be a trans woman. Checkmate, gaytheists. Another L in the atheist bag. It's holding on for dear life. Sexual orientation, none of that matters. To Coincidentally, another L? You know what's in the cross? Multiple L's. What say you now? <laughs> it all A makes God sense. That now. loves all. Gender dysphoria. Four is L's? <laughs> and you're holding all of them close to your chest? I think I it know you are. is obviously real because many people experience it, but like any kind of dysphoria, whether it's someone who thinks they're overweight or anything i think it should be treated as not reality like if i oh my god dude <sighs> someone tell this lady that being fat is not the same as being trans god damn it <sighs> you know this woman is fat phobic by the way you know she does not have kind words to say about fat people specifically fat women let me tell you i'm willing to bet money on that was obese i wouldn't want to go to a affirming therapist to tell me yes you are obese and you should you know get skinnier well i i had the opportunity of working on the dsm4 i think it was when we the diagnostic statistical manual of mental disorders dsm is the handbook used by healthcare professionals in the united states and much of the world is the authoritative guide to the diagnosis of mental disorders wow thank you psychiatry we actually declassified uh transgender dysphoria from a mental illness to a condition. Oh you know, I, my, but no, you can't, you know, don't bring that up, please. It hurts my feelings. You, the medical professionals, the actual people whose job it is to do this, don't bring that up. Come on. I had been, at that point in time, I'd been cross-dressing for 50 years. And, um, you know, because that dysphoria was there and every single thing I did to try to drive it away didn't work. I spent millions of dollars Holy. trying to be the coolest dude in the world. You know, I bought Bro, so <laughs> many, so many trans women have had these experiences. I have as well as a trans feminine person where you over, you try to overcompensate as a man because that's what society expects you to do, but it's not actually. It's not actually who you are, so it doesn't work. It's so many people. God damn. How many millions did I spend? What color is your Bugatti? Twos? Call me out in the chat, you son of a bitch. Airplanes, I bought <laughs> everything that I could to just show the world how masculine I was. It didn't work. Gender dysphoria almost made me kill myself. And coming from Mississippi, at the time, there wasn't a lot of access to gender-affirming resources, like hormones, if I wanted 
surgery, whatever the case may be. And a lot of us trans folks who don't have access like that, a lot of us have to do sex work to be able to afford some of these things as well. Me coming up at the age of 20, and I knew I had a serious gender dysphoria, I did things to my body that I should have went to a hospital to do. That is something that's very, very hard for people to understand a lot of us so that's i don't know if what she's saying like she did things to her body like she was trying to do like gender affirming kind of things or what but it is absolutely the case that if you make it illegal for people to get a medical procedure they are going to try to get it through extra legal means and the clearest example of this is abortion making abortion illegal does not stop people from getting abortions it might stop some percentage but it doesn't stop them all and the ones that are still getting it will go through third party channels that are not regulated and are more dangerous and are likely to cause irreparable harm to the person getting that abortion and maybe even make them infertile or kill them. So if you care about the safety, health and well-being of your fellow human beings, making abortion illegal does not stop it from happening. It makes it less safe It makes more people get hurt. It's the same for gender affirming care, hormones, or even surgeries, though the hormones one is the biggest one because those are easier to do on your own. If you make getting gender affirming care in the form of HRT through the proper channels impossible, which many states in the US are trying to do, people are going to get them through third party channels. Now, luckily, getting them through third party channels is actually safer than getting an abortion through third party channels because you can already know about in the united states anyway the regimens that people go on and go on similar regimens you can buy testosterone blockers you can buy estrogen essentially over the counter through third-party sources and just do your dosage yourself and you can get regular blood tests so you have to pay out of pocket obviously for all of this to monitor your levels and adjust your dosage accordingly that is what is called diy hrt there might be some people out there that are literally like Walter White and Jesse Pinkman synthesizing estrogen and whatnot in their RVs to create it, but that's not the usual occurrence. Most people are not doing that. They are buying the hormones, the puberty blockers, and moderating their own dosages. That's it. Now, it, this is going to be a lot harder, obviously, for trans masculine people or trans men because testosterone is a controlled substance because if abused, it could cause a lot of damage to the human body. It's estrogen is not the same way. Um, so that one's a little bit more difficult. Right? So this conversation of DIY is usually going to revolve around trans feminine HRT. So basically the take is this, if you are uncomfortable or do not like the idea of people going through third party channels to access this kind of healthcare, you should be one of the most forthcoming, confident, strongest fighters for people being able to access them through the proper channels, like going to their general care practitioner, getting their prescription from a pharmacy, all that shit. You should be one of the strongest supporters of this because otherwise, logically, your lack of support for those things causes the, what you would consider the unsafe versions of it to occur commit suicide because of gender dysphoria. And so it hits our community a lot harder. I do think- And I will say, by the way, at least when it comes to trans feminine HRT, so testosterone blockers and like estradiol or whatever, you know, form you're taking it, that I really don't care about when it comes to DIY, as long as you are informed and you understand the dosages and you have access to blood tests and you're regularly testing and you understand your levels, I do not give a shit. Gender dysphoria is, is very much real. I think the issue that's happened, especially in the space of science and research, is that we've looked at gender dysphoria and said the only source of care that we can go through is blind gender affirmation care. What? What do you mean blind gender affirmation care? How do you define that? You're telling me that gender dysphoria is best treated by gender affirming care? I'm shocked. What? You're telling me that the medical and scientific consensus on the treatment of gender dysphoria is gender affirming care? No way. Surely that can't be correct. What's the other option? University of Washington peer-reviewed study from Jubilee. <laughs> Receipt of gender-affirming care intervention, specifically PBs or GAHs, was associated with 60% lower odds of moderate to severe depressive symptoms and 73% lower odds of self-harm or suicidal thoughts during the first year of multidisciplinary gender care. Oh, wow. Well, if you care about people not being depressed and not killing themselves, then it seems like you should be in support of uh, trans health care. Oh. And a lot of the research shows that this is not the route to go into. In other ah, countries, that's why this came up. Okay, it came up a little bit early. Another fact check. Thank you, Jubilee. That have decided to do nonpartisan research. Sweden, Finland have decided that, yes, gender affirmation care should be an option, but it really should be the last. Uh-oh, got another one. Swedish National Board of Health and Welfare. 
For adolescents with gender incongruence, the NBHW deems that the risk of puberty suppressing treatment with GnRH analogs and gender affirming hormonal treatment currently outweigh the possible benefits and that the treatment should be offered only in exceptional cases. So that's puberty suppressing treatment, puberty blockers, and gender affirming hormonal treatment currently outweigh the possible benefits. Interesting. Resort What's cool about this comes is to that treating that's not the only medical organization that's looking into this. There is a disagreement here. And the medical consensus in the United States seems to be contradicting this. So it looks like if we really want to get to the root of the issue, we got to keep studying this shit. We got to keep researching this shit. We got to keep looking into it in a nonpartisan capacity. However, if we look into the history of transphobia and anti-trans people and conservatives, well, they're kind of interested in, a lot of the time, I'm not saying the people on this panel are, a lot of the times in banning even research into these things. So, I don't know, there might be a reason why there's a deficit of information involved here and we're having to make up, I don't know, let me maybe say make up lost time. I, I seem to remember there was an event that happened in Germany. Uh, I think books were burned. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that some of the first books that were burned in the Holocaust were on trans healthcare and gender related studies. The first vaginoplasty was performed there and we lost it all to the Nazis. Those are not the kind of allies I'm looking for. If I'm anybody on this panel, so I, I'd be careful. When it comes to banning research into things like this, you know? I'm not saying any of them are talking about banning it. They seem to be interested in the research uh, because we're quoting stuff and then also saying that the pro-trans side has to have studies, but they don't when they admit that they don't, you know what I mean? people who uh, appear at clinics with gender dysphoria. And, you know, a lot of conservatives will deny and say, well, gender affirmation care does not make them happier. And in many cases, that is true. But there are the cases like your, yourselves where the gender affirmation care does make them happier. The overwhelming yep. amount of people that go on gender affirming care become happier. Like Jubilee was citing earlier, rates of depression go down dramatically. Rates of attempted suicidality in trans people, specifically trans youth, go down dramatically especially in conjunction with a supportive family and supportive community by the way you know i know a lot of people that have uh, transitioned have untransitioned i've talked with a gentleman at a religious right convention one day and he was sitting there screaming how jesus got him out of his gender transition <laughs> and honestly that was the saddest man i've ever talked to in my life when, when i looked at him straight in the eyes and i i said you know here i I don't agree with what you say, but I 100% support your right to say that. And he just literally broke down crying on the steps of the Supreme Court. If know. I could interject really quickly, I do. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel as though the medical profession is actually inching towards a space that is going to become unsafe for people oh, who try to express God, their gender dude. dysphoria. Because now we so have. So now, so are, do we have to suppress research? Is that what we're saying? What, what's your conclusion from this garbage? Uh, young children coming into clinics yeah. expressing this, who by and large, statistically, about 60 to 70% grow out of that, that dysphoria is a debunked study that study included boys who said that they liked the color pink those boys that said they liked the color pink were recorded as having gender dysphoria i've seen this study that is a incorrect percentage but because it's become a political issue but jubilee did not in fact check that one god damn it where, where many activists have come in and say, no, you blindly affirm, you affirm to, to the furthest extent that you can, rather than going through a, a more comprehensive process with these children, we have a, a... I love how many talking points Jubilee is actually fact-checked and disproven from the conservative side. The only one that they've kind of like fact-checked or whatever, which wasn't really to do with anything anybody on the pro-trans side said, was the statement from that Swedish medical board or whatever, that contradicts the overwhelming consensus in the United States. I like how that's the case. So many of them have been fact-checked even by Jubilee and debunked. What I think is a medical tragedy happening against young people in this country. I no, have- You would think that if you didn't understand anything about it. Sexually harassed. I imagine all of them come up, yep. Even I have. Yeah, I think in our society, it's so sexualized, every, everyone and everything, and I think we owe a lot of that to pornography and just media. And Oh I boy, I'm so excited about her thoughts on banning pornography. <sighs> I have to imagine she's anti-sex work. Maybe she's actually talking about like reforming, you know, the sex work industry as a whole, or at least the porn industry as a whole, which there do need to be a lot of reforms made to make it safer for the participants, but you know. 
think the kind of acceptance that I, I do see more so in the LGBT community of like, you know, sex is great and let like everyone talk about it and there's no shame and everyone's just blurting out, you know, the fact that we're perpetuating uh, a asked? culture what do you that's care? frankly, in my opinion, disgusting. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So misogynistic sexual harassment is the fault of queer people being open about reality, about the fact that sex exists and it's a thing that people do. And that studies have shown that even sex education for kids lowers rates of teen pregnancy, STI transmission, sexual abuse. So we understand that in the clinical setting of a classroom, we could talk about this. We can understand that in the setting of, you know, broader society that not suppressing people and oppressing people on the basis of their sexuality, not doing that is good. We should allow people to be gay, be lesbian, pan, bi, whatever. We understand that that has actually had a lot of benefits in society and no actual harms. But of course, it's the queer people who are the problem here. You know, it's not the patriarchal, misogynistic system that we're all forced to live under and that actual good feminists are trying hard to fight and break to produce equality for all people. Not surely. So are you talking specifically about LGBT people? I'm talking more so just about this sexual revolution that the more sexual you are, the so more part- So your ankle's not covered up. That's what I want to know. Because clearly this person is a bit prudish. Clearly. If you think that the sexual revolution and that people being open about their sexuality is a problem, then clearly you should also agree that people, women, should cover it up. Like this is literally like, oh my God, but look at what she was wearing type rhetoric. Why the f*** are your ankles out? Partners you have, the more open you are about your sex life and everything, the more like liberated you are. What is consent? Like the, like you people are coming out of the woodwork saying, oh you know, God. I was violated, this happened to me. Coming and, but... out of the woodwork? Expressing, oh my God, what, well, she's evil. What is that? You people are coming out of the woodwork expressing that they were abused or harassed? What comes out of the woodwork, by the way? What creatures are typically coming out of woodwork? I know it's a turn of phrase, but given a lot of the dehumanizing language that we're hearing here, I have to wonder. But they like drove home with that person or, and I'm not blaming them. Oh my, oh yeah, you are. No, you are a victim blaming actually. Why are your ankles out? Put them away. Put your dogs away. They don't need all that air. But I am saying those lines are being blurred because of our just flagrant disregard for any you kind You see, like, I can talk so confidently and forcefully about what I believe, and every time these people on the right, the conservatives on this panel, these women on this panel, talk about what they believe in ostensibly, they're wavering in the wind. They're like, oh my god, I did say that, but I actually meant this, and I'm actually, I'm not trying to say that, even though logically that is what I'm saying. I, I don't want to, uh, just say what you believe. Just say what you believe. Kind of, like, actual relationship prior to the sexual encounter, and I think a lot of people are being exploited left and right. True sex positivity has been powerful. It has um, helped us to grow and learn about our bodies in so many ways and learn safe sex practices in so many ways. What I would blame for rape culture or for a lack of good boundaries or that kind of thing is we live in a capitalist system that has taken Holy things base. like sex positivity and mangled it and repackaged it and made it a whole other thing than what it actually is. I, have, uh, I was sexually harassed for five years. So I don't know that that point was delivered as a, you know, rhetorically proficiently as I would hope for a panel like this. You know, that on its own, uh, I don't think is going to be enough to like tell people enough about the point that she's making. Uh, but you know, kind of cool to hear. By a woman. That does happen because I'm pretty sure it's going to be- and It's just the difficulties of the Jubilee platform, right? Like you only have so much time you're going to be able to talk and you don't even know how much is actually going to be kept in the final video. Uh, so, you know. It's, it's, it's hard coming from a man, but it, it, to me, it was harder coming from a woman because it, was, it wasn't expected. Like, I understand you're, you're going to probably touch on that about how men are more on the predatory side or the more harassing side sometimes. But I just want to like, so let you know that it does happen with women as well. Yeah, sure. It's still a problem of the system we live in, though. And that system currently is a patriarchal one that not only provides excuses for the men that do this, but also suggests that women are not as capable because men are like the all-powerful ones in that sort of circumstance. Like, you understand that, right? Like, it's still the same problem of the same system.
all through my life, you know, world's biggest kid in junior high school, I basically like, was... To interrupt and say this shit, like, I, I understand not having a response. Because that was like a complete... Like, while it is true that women are also just as capable as anybody else of doing this kind of thing, like, it, it like completely unnecessary interruption. Harass continuously for being gender non-conforming. Back then, you know, everybody in junior high school took showers together. I basically had a permanent welt on my bottom from people snapping towels at me because, you know, I wasn't as well endowed as I probably should be. I had, you know, pretty good sized boy boobs and basically was just unhappy being in sports. But, um, you know, it happens everywhere. I have been sexually assaulted um, and uh, it didn't work out well for any of them. It's real. Let me just put it that way. It's absolutely real. Yeah, I think it'd be hard to find a person who hasn't yeah. been sexually harassed in some way, shape, or form, whether you are male or female. I think it's a, an experience that we all share because we are in somewhat of a hypersexualized society, and people uh, love to make those comments public. I am. Who the fuck is doing the hypersexualization, by the way? I've made this argument already in this video. Conservatives are so fucking hypersexual, it's absurd. They're so hypersexual to the point where they need to justify not being hypersexual on the basis of their fucking God or the religion that they believe in, right? Like, I, I don't need that. I don't need to base my reasons for not doing this kind of crazy shit on that. You know what I mean? Like, the idea that they immediately think of trans people and immediately think of sex is already a hypersexualized way of talking about just that specific topic. It's like, oh my God. When are you not thinking about sex? Uh, a podcaster, and I do social media for a living. So oh, just... imagine my shock. Let's go. One of us. Except, you know, clearly she knows where the money is. And I'm a fool uh, for not grifting in my view. I don't know. She's grifting. She might genuinely believe what she's talking about. I'd be grifting if I was to be a right winger. That's why I'm not doing that. You can imagine the onslaught of sexual harassment is quite, quite vast. From a very young age... I've had this recurring nightmare of something happening to me, trying to warn people and no one believes me. When you're not believed that you're a desirable person, and, it, and I really don't think rape has anything to do with desire, but when you're not believed in that way, when, when trans women are experiencing trans misogyny, we are the ones who are least believed when we are sexually assaulted. Um, and it just, it just feels so dis But I should say, the reason why trans women are going to be the least believed is because transphobes don't believe that trans women are women. It's because transphobes believe that trans women are actually men. And because of that, they should have had the ability to stop whatever it was that was happening because they also don't believe that men can be sexually harassed a lot of the times. That's what a lot of people on the right believe, that men are not capable of being that way. That's why so many of like the old ass men with their fucking glasses profile pictures, whenever there's a story about a teacher who had sex with, you know, like a 14 year old boy or whatever, they're like, oh my God, where the hell was she when I was that age? There's no, vi li literally Tucker Carlson was defending a woman who gave a lap dance to a student. I don't, I forget how old the student was. I think he might've been in his early teens. Said it was a victimless crime, quote unquote, on live television, Tucker Carlson did. He said it was quote, a victimless crime. That's like how far a lot of conservatives think that men cannot be victims of this. So if they don't believe that trans women are women, if they believe that trans women are men, then of course they're not going to believe that they got abused or assaulted or raped or whatever, because that's their lens of viewing it, which is fucked. Empowering and so terrifying when you know that you are someone who is seen as hypersexual, as inherently sexual, as inherently predatory, and yet at the same time you're seen as someone who can be isolated and sexually assaulted and not believed. I don't think there is anything inherently predatory about trans people. And I think oftentimes- You don't think there's anything inherently predatory about trans people, but also you are the same person who said that you do not think that trans women should be able to go into women's restrooms because women might get predated upon. So are you saying that they might get predated upon against cis men pretending to be trans? Well, how do you know? Like, yeah, you're literally just lying. Lying to your audience. Can somebody inform this lady that she is literally lying to her audience? Talking from a conservative perspective, it gets misconstrued as viewing you as a threat, and I hope that that never comes off. And I think that allegations of sexual assault, regardless of who they're coming from, uh, should be taken seriously. Like, there's literally no reason to believe the word of anybody here, except maybe the woman in the middle. Maybe. Very clearly, these two people are ideologues and are activists and have biases that have led them to this point that they constantly 
reaffirm this person through religion and she probably has a social media platform let's be honest and this person who's literally said that she's a, a podcaster like this is her job i think we agreed on something <laughs> we found common ground <laughs> oh my god what an absolute fucking sh show i'm sorry that this segment was three hours and ten minutes i'm like high progressive you probably shouldn't do any like ex exceptional editing to this if any at all uh except for maybe cutting out like large downtime um i feel like we just upload this one, <laughs> this one uh on its own uh, because if you were to edit this it would be absurd i feel like but i mean do what you will um uh, so anyway that was insane i once again have turned a 40 minute video into a three hour and 11 minute epic uh which is why it's been a while for me to get to this video i hope you've enjoyed if you have enjoyed <laughs> i love these short form videos same Hey, yeah, hit the like button, leave a comment down below talking about how trans people are poggers or something. Anyway. <laughs> this video is Connor Call. is another twofer. This time, the winner is someone who's been in literally every single god dang Connor Call out running since I started doing them. And it's finally won for the first time. It's Mellow Melly. And another first time winner, Kira After Dark. Thank you so much for both of you for the support. I hope you've all enjoyed the videos. If you'd like to be the next Connor Call, all you can do is follow me on Twitter, at ConnorCC, retweet my video links when they go live. Remember to subscribe to the channel. All notifications on when you hit the bell. Appreciate that. Leave a like if you'd like. Comment something down below about how trans women are poggers. And have a good day.